I grew up in a small country town, Shasta Lake, California. My school was predominantly white. It was a small enough town that everyone pretty much knew each other. I was known as a really good athlete, and my dad had a reputation for being my biggest fan, but also for standing up against Latinos. He, even, was often kicked out of the stands for getting in fights and defending himself when Latinos would call him a Nazi. Seems that our simply being of German descent was a constant irritant to them. I would get into fights, too, having to stick up for myself instead of knuckling under to what the Latino girls said and wanted. I got excellent grades, 3.9 to 4.2, but grew more and more resentful of school and conditions around me. I used to come home in tears because I was getting suspended from school all the time for defending myself against the Latinos. The chief problem was that I was drug-free, white, and proud of my blood and heritage. This really irked a group of Latino girls who would constantly rag and attack me. One night at my volleyball game, my homecoming game, I spotted this gang of Latinos sitting behind my father. As the game was coming to an end, I kept seeing my dad snap around and look behind him, like he kept getting hit by something. Then I caught, out of the corner of my eye, those little devils throwing ice at my dad and mocking him by raising their hands in the air, as if they were saluting Hitler. After the game was over and we shook hands with the other team, I walked up to the bleachers towards my dad. Just at the moment he turned around, I told the Latinos, nicely actually, to quit their acting up. Then one of them called me Hitler, unleashed a barrage of profanity against me and my dad, and took a swipe at me. That really teed me off. I don't think I've ever been that mad. I lunged back at her slamming her head between the bleachers and pounding her face. It took three full-sized men to pull me off of her. I broke her nose and split her eyebrow. After they got me out of the gym, I had to deal with the cops and such. She did not press charges, so I was released to my father's custody. Girls should not fight. Which brings me to my point of why girls should not fight. We are just too fragile and break easily. I totally agree with skinheads that girls should not fight. They should stand by their men. But sometimes, I guess, you have to do what is necessary when a skinhead isn't on hand. On the way up to the bleachers, when I had rebuffed the Latinos, I had split my leg open and it was hard for me to walk. But when my dad picked me up from the police department, the only thing he kept saying to me was, Cher, I'm proud of you. You did the right thing. Keep on walking. Don't let your legs slow you down. Keep walking. It was a happy feeling to have such support from my dad. Two weeks later, I was closing the family pizza joint we owned when two cars pulled up. I didn't even have to turn around to see who it was. I instinctively knew who it was. Three Latino guys and five girls rushed in and jumped me. I put up a fight, but I was clearly outnumbered and at a disadvantage. Jesse, the girl whose nose I broke, was with them. They kept hollering about how they hated skinheads, how all skinheads should be, quote, burned alive, and how I and my ancestors were supposedly all KKK. I actually laughed in their faces at the inaccuracy of their statements. I mean, they were so dumb, they actually were funny. How dumb can you be? There wasn't even a skinhead anywhere in sight. Then, I got knocked to the floor and kicked in the face. I took a deep breath and shook my head in disbelief. Can this really be happening? I thought to myself. Then I thought, is it worth it? Is being white and standing up for myself and my beliefs worth all this pain I'm having to put up with? Then, I heard the echo of my dad's voice. You did the right thing. Keep walking, Cher. I'm proud of you. It was that pride that gave me the will I needed. Right then and there. I took a deep breath, let out a cuss word, and got right back up, swinging. I don't ever swear like that. Ever. But, somehow, the word just slipped out. Just as Jesse kicked me in the stomach and the others hit me in the face. A few times. Then, before I even saw it coming, whack. One of them smashed me in the shin with a 2 by 4 fracturing my leg. But... I kept fighting back so tenaciously that they saw they couldn't defeat me, so they all ran out the door. My house was about nine or ten blocks away. I limped the whole way home. I'm not sure how I made it, but I still heard the sound of my dad's voice, keep walking, share, keep walking. I guess my point is that even though I don't always understand why my life had to be one of a constant battle, our family values between myself and my dad carried me through. My dad was always there for me in spirit. Being white is more than just being aware of my skin, but of standing behind skinheads, who are always around in spirit as well, and having pride for my country. Being white is my family, my roots, my way of life. It's always there. There's no denying it. It's nobility, it's strength. It will be there to lift me up when I really need my pride, when I need to keep walking. This post was made by Sherry Papini in 2003, when she was in high school, and is, like most of the things that Sherry has said publicly, completely fake.
Welcome back to another episode of Dreading, or if this is your first time here, welcome. Today we are going to be going over the recent released interviews from Sherry Papini that were recorded shortly after her fake kidnapping in 2016. These interviews were acquired and made public by Crime Circus here on YouTube, and a link will be left in the description if you want to check out the original video and subscribe to their page. We have already covered this case and some of the footage attached to it twice over, with one of our most popular uploads being when we covered the case originally. This topic is easily covered, as no real crime happened. However, the same day that Sherry staged her own kidnapping, another woman went missing in the area, Stacy Smart. We have one video on that case, as there is very little information online about that investigation, and I urge you to consider watching that, or supporting the Smart family by donating to their GoFundMe. Links will be left in the description box down below to that, as well as the Help Find Stacy Smart Facebook page. As someone working in the ever-evolving online space, I know money can go as quickly as it can come, which is why I try to save wherever I can. Add to the fact that inflation is on the rise, I try to do the best I can to cut back and limit my spending, which is why I enjoy using today's sponsor, Upside. Upside helps you get cash back on things that you spend money on, everything from groceries to gas and the occasional night out. I personally have been using Upside to offset the price of gas. Using Upside, I was able to upgrade the microphone I use, and I plan on doing more in terms of production in the next year, which wouldn't have been possible as YouTube regularly demonetizes this channel. If you're interested in getting cash back on your everyday purchases, download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. Use the code DREADING and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Then simply claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business, pay as usual with a credit card or debit card, and get paid. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars per week, which they can cash out of their bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon or other brands. Upside users earn up to three times more cash back when compared to credit card rewards and loyalty programs. And once again, it's 100% free to use. If you're interested in earning some extra money, download the free Upside app and use code DREADING to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Thank you to Upside for supporting my channel and making it possible for me to make this content. With all that said, let us begin. Before we begin, a brief background into the life and lies of Sherry Papini. Sherry Papini was the type of person who liked to believe that they excelled in everything that they did. She was constantly talking about how she excelled in business, in school, and in her relationships, both romantic and platonic. She was everyone's best friend, confidant, and cheerleader, always supporting those around her and going above and beyond to help them with whatever they needed. But that was only how she would describe herself. In reality, Sherry was not like that at all. She got alright grades in school, usually B's and C's, but she was constantly looking for attention. Sherry was constantly telling stories about her health, her life, and how she was a victim of this or that. In an interview with True Crime Daily, an ex-boyfriend discussed how she would constantly lie in order to ingratiate herself with him. He dated Sherry Papini and says he knows firsthand that she's a world-class fantasist. She's a compulsive liar. She would, you know, not talk to you for three or four days, and then all of a sudden there'd be some fantastical story about what happened. Shaheen Davari says he dated the mom when she was a 20-year-old youth counselor. Get this, he says he was just 15. In retrospect, sure, tons of red flags, right? But she was a counselor that was... Uh, going out with a 15-year-old kid. Now 35, the professor of communications says Sherry's lies were never-ending. For example, she kept insisting she was a skilled surfer. I surfed all the time when I was 15, 16 years old. It's something that I really enjoyed doing, and she told me that she surfed as well. There was always an excuse as to why she couldn't go surf, and she had to have her surfboard that was at her house but didn't have any pictures. He says there was also a mystery medical condition. She was faking a heart condition at one point and eventually like not only me, but a bunch of people figured out that that was not true. What did you think when you heard that Sherry Papini was kidnapped? I was like, there's no way, she's fine. I promise you she's fine. She claimed that she was a surfer simply because he was. But whenever he asked her to go surfing, she always came up with a reason why she couldn't. She also claimed to have a heart disease, which resulted in her undergoing multiple surgeries. But when pressed for details, it became clear that she was lying. To Sherry, attention was everything, and she didn't care what she had to do or who she would have to throw under the bus to get it. In one notable instance, 
Sherry would go so far as to accuse her husband, Keith Papini, of assault to her friends. Sherry had gone to a party and, while drunk, hit herself in the face with a Wii remote. Those who witnessed the hit stated that Sherry was beside herself all night, talking about how seriously her eye hurt. Most people recalled being at her beck and call, taking care of her because, and I quote, she couldn't see. The hit resulted in a small black eye and some light swelling, but it wasn't too severe. But the following day, Sherry told a completely different story as to how she got the black eye. She told friends who had been at the party and had taken care of her the night before that when she went home after the party, she had gotten into a loud, violent argument with Keith. He accused her of flirting with other people and struck her in anger, and she, now, was fearful for her life. However, her friends knew that that hadn't happened. They had seen where she got the black eye from, and they knew there was no way that Keith would have done that to her. These friends stated following this, they maintained their distance from Sherry, as they felt that if she was willing to throw her partner, the man she had vowed to stay with in sickness and in health with, under the bus like this, there was no way that they wouldn't be treated the same. She had also begun numerous affairs throughout the marriage, resulting in her and Keith sharing a Facebook profile. According to police reports, Keith had found a number of flirty messages with other men, and though Sherry told him it was nothing and that she wasn't cheating, they used a shared profile for peace of mind. But lo and behold, that didn't stop Sherry. In fact, she would use the shared profile as evidence of how domineering and overbearing Keith was in correspondence with other men. Sherry stated that Keith was paranoid about her cheating and would fly off the handle whenever she spoke to another man. She would confide in these men that she wanted to get out of her marriage because her husband was incredibly evil and vindictive, but she couldn't leave her children. Sherry had a revolving door of people coming in and out of her life, including paramours, who she would string along for a number of months. She wasn't able to hold on to friends for more than a couple of years, as over time, her lies would become obvious, but she couldn't stop lying. People gave her more attention when they viewed her as a victim, and leading up to November 16th, she became determined to get the most attention she would ever receive. She got into contact with one of her ex-boyfriends, a man named James Rays. She told James how Keith was hurting her, and how she was living in fear for her life, and how if she didn't leave him, she would be killed. She told him that she needed to disappear, to leave the area as quickly as possible, and, using a burner phone, told him to get a friend to rent a car, drive eight hours down to her home, pick her up a large Starbucks for the trip, and then drive her eight hours back to his apartment. And James did, without even questioning her. For a number of weeks, Sherry stayed in James's apartment, blacking out his windows to not be seen, and not eating. According to James, she began to hit herself frequently, purposely running into furniture and making it appear as if she was severely bruised and beaten. She asked him to hit her with hockey pucks, which he did. And after a week or so, she asked him to brand her with a biblical passage, something she claimed she always wanted to have tattooed. She also chopped off a significant portion of her hair, resulting in a bob-like haircut. After a couple of weeks, Sherry told James she needed to go back home. He was confused, as he believed the entire ordeal was to get her away from Keith. But she stated that she missed her children and wanted to go back, divorce Keith, and start a new life. She devised how to get back home, and told James to drop her off in the middle of the night in a well-lit area so she could get help. Following the return, she was taken to the hospital and reunited with Keith. According to those present, the two were extremely emotional, with Sherry repeating that she never thought she would see him again. The following is the first interview she would have given to the cops, following the kidnapping. With the clarity that hindsight provides, it's incredibly interesting to watch as Sherry uses the manipulation tactics she has used throughout her life to try and sell an entirely unbelievable scenario. Seeing as this is the first time the police are sitting down to talk to her, they have no idea whether or not she is telling the truth, meaning that there won't be any pushback. Usually when we cover these cases, the detectives already know what has happened, and that the person they are talking to is guilty so they use that to their advantage. However, here, that is not the case. Throughout this investigation, pay attention to how small Sherry makes herself. She is constantly diminishing herself, making herself small, and looking up at people around her. She wants to look like a child, weak and unable to defend herself. That way, any accusation sent her way seems ridiculous. She couldn't have possibly done any of this. She is too small and innocent. Let's watch. For, the, for you, for that first time to be able to say, you know what, I'm sure to pee. And this is what I want right now. Nobody's going to tell me any different. Um, nothing's going to happen to me. You can't do anything to me that I've already been through to make me do what you want. This is Sherry's first interview. And already, we see that she has dwarfed herself in the chair and is physically hunched over to make herself appear small. 
She keeps steady, assured eye contact with the detective, and her blinking is incredibly well-paced. She's confident in herself, and the narrative she's trying to portray, even though being confident and self-assured in this moment doesn't make a lot of sense. Sherry had just gone through what she said was the most traumatic experience of her life. She was kidnapped, trafficked, and witnessed a murder. And when being questioned by the interrogator, she has no trouble maintaining eye contact and is incredibly measured. How she is sitting is strange as well, as usually that is a position used to soothe oneself during distress, but she isn't doing that. It's very clear, even in this one instance, that she is deliberately trying to appear weak. Even her bandage, which from released medical documents was not necessary, but it is positioned in a semi-stylish way. It looks like a pore strip, or how TikTok teens stylize themselves. She wants to appear battered and bruised, but only in a presentable, palatable way. Had you been beaten horrifically, the way she had said, the fact that there are no bruises or injuries around her face or neck indicates that the beatings she underwent were done by someone who cared about her appearance. Uh, and if that, was, that was the point that where you were at. In, in my own head, when you said that, I walked out of the room smiling. Like, uh, because it, it was awesome to see somebody who hasn't been you didn't let it eat you up. Uh, everybody, you fought every day. Sherry is very socially aware. When she is being praised for her nobility and strength in terms of what she has overcome and gone through, she gives an emotional reaction, as she knows that is what is expected of her. Again, she spent years lying to others, telling them falsehoods about her life and what she has gone through, and she is incredibly gifted at feigning innocence and victimhood. Her entire life has led up to this moment. Uh in ways that we'll never know, ways that you'll probably never remember. Um, but you did, because you were able, very first time I talked to you, nope, leave, you might as well not be here until I have key. And <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You're not well, my no, husband. You... I know I'm not your husband. He's kind of Oh, stuff. yeah. You, you remember that day? in the room and yeah. I saw your face and I was like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not the man I'm looking for. Yeah. I, yeah, no. I knew yeah. exactly what that face looks like. And, uh, yeah. yeah, but well, because I'd already kicked a bunch of people out before yeah. you even got there. Absolutely. Um, I, I don't know who the guy was that was in there. I want to say he was one of the CHP... I kicked him out twice. Um, <laughs> was he the big older guy with the chains? Where are you uh -uh. The other part? Well, I don't trust technology, especially when it's <laughs> not mine. Uh, I think we're good there, but I just want to run my just audio for backup. Uh, so that way I don't screw something up. I'm just looking for a closer outlet. There. there was a... Uh, there was a little extension cord? Yeah. That's mine. No, extension cord, so it's going to be on the oh, okay. Uh, there was a blonde woman, a, a, a smaller blonde woman. Yeah. Was she CHP or was no, she? No, she was Yellow County Sheriff's Office. Okay. Um, but there was, I, I don't know what he was. I want to say he was CHP because when the, what was the lady with the short black hair? Yeah, she's, she's, the ID, she's the ID tech. She was great. Yeah. And um, she was seemed to be very protective. Mm -hmm. And... Um, because she was kind of talking to me a little bit, and I was, I was very, I was very angry, and I was very frustrated because when they first pulled up, I asked them multiple times to cut off the zip tie because my hand was like turning blue, like my hand it was cut off, and they wouldn't do it, mm -hmm. and that was very frustrating to me that no one would cut it off, and I was telling her that, and I said, you know, they wouldn't let me talk to my husband, I want my husband, and they weren't even untying. And he said, we did untie you. And I was like, get the fuck out. <laughs> no, you didn't. Because he yelled back at me like, we did. And I'm like, no, you didn't. Despite Sherry's original posturing to make herself look as small and fragile as possible, she is incredibly animated and expressive. Again, like a child. Um, and How long did yeah. it take you to get there? As opposed to it, yeah, <laughs> no. So I just was very, um, very angry. And that, and that guy really... Didn't care for him much. Huh. It's, um, it's easy to do that. Yeah. Um, well, let's. I, uh, can I use the ladies' room? Yes, please? absolutely. Allow me. To, yep. I'll, I'll, I'll. I went through that already. Um, I can explain what the markings mean. Okay, can, Keith, can you say what today's date is for me? 
Just do it. What's today's date? It's the 28th, right? November 28th, okay. 2016. So, though we can't hear what they are saying, there is something interesting about Sherry and Keith's body language at this point. Despite Sherry dwarfing herself, hunching over, and being in the fetal position during this interview, when talking to his wife, Keith purposely makes himself smaller. He is unconsciously trying to make her more comfortable and put her at ease in this positioning, which, had she actually gone through a traumatic event, would have worked to comfort her. Again, Sherry just had a group of people blindfold her and traffic her. Every aspect of control was taken from her. So her husband, the closest person to her, making himself smaller, allowing her space, and giving her control would be an effective way of communicating and rebuilding her confidence in the world. It's an incredibly kind thing to do, and something that he did unconsciously. During this, like we've already talked about, this is going to bring up a lot of the old stuff. Um, things are, because regardless of how you feel right now, this is stressful. Um, we're going to be talking about stuff. You know you're going to have to start talking about some stuff that you may uh, have been keeping back on purpose, maybe, um, and you know you're going to have to go there. This this is super stressful. I've been on the other side of it because I get in trouble. I'm, I'm, I'm not that type of guy. Uh, I push the element and I'm in the sergeant's office going, sorry. Like, uh, even I do this for a living, it's still... To be on the other side of it, it's hard. I know it's stressful. We all know it's stressful. Um, so it's going to trigger trigger stress responses that you will you haven't learned to understand yet. Um, so if it gets too much, you're in charge of this. We're not. I'm not. I don't want anything that you're not willing to give me. I don't want. I don't want to push you farther than you need think you can go. Um, we're here for you. I'm here for you. Um, if this turns into something that we need to do once a week, we'll do this once a week. Um, if this is something we can do all at once, we can get it done all at once. But I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, you're in control of this. Um, we're not here trying to make this worse, sort of, um, at all. Um, so if we get to that point and it's too much, if we just need to take a break, tell us. Um, if I notice that we're going to need to take a break, I'm going to say that. Um, my goal is to continue to help you survive this. Um, so that's 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 the rules of the interview at this point. If it's too much, tell me. If I think it's too much, I'll tell you. Um, so you're still in charge. You're still in control. You're still in the go get my husband. Uh, you got that. So, and just so you don't think that I'm being rude, you know. There's other things that are going on, obviously. So if you see me grab my phone, and if you see me texting, by all means, I'm asking permission to be rude because I may have to text somebody right. for stuff that's going on. Okay. If I walk, get up and walk out, please don't take that as, well, he's being rude or you said something that is, okay, there's, I, I'm just laying the ground rules so that, because we've learned in the past, you know, when you start doing this stuff, that sometimes people take offense to that. But by, so I'm that guy. Um, so uh, it shouldn't be Kyle because everything's going to be funneled through me if there's something going on back at the office because there is the other part of this investigation that's currently going on. Um, so I just want to make sure that you understand that. I mean, just like Kyle says, is, you know, I'm not going to start out, okay, tell me about this. Basically, it's we're going to um, just ask you to tell us your information whenever we get going and you just tell us everything as you want and as we go. We'll ask some questions, clarify some stuff, and hopefully by the end of today we have a very good idea of what's going on. I mean, so it's, you're, like Kyle says, you're in control. You need to take a break. Say when and we'll go out there and all that kind of stuff, okay? I feel like sometimes it's easier with my eyes closed. To sure. Is that okay? Absolutely. Doing, Absolutely. I... You can do anything you want. Other than assault me or hit Kyle. You can hit Kyle all you want. I'm good with that. <laughs> Just don't hit me. Uh, so it's, that's what I mean. If you need to, if you, that's, that's everything you need to do, you can do. And we brought an easel if you want to draw stuff. We brought, we brought every <sighs> tool. You keep we, saying that I'm like terrible at drawing. Yeah. Well, no, we brought, I, we have the terrible pamphlet over there because things. obviously. And we've been trying to do cars and I'm like, I'm like the worst car person <laughs> ever. 
when it comes to that stuff. He's actually like machine gun, like enough. And you know, one and, more, and that, one more. And that goes into play with me. If if I hear you talking about something, I'm not going to stop and interrupt you. And I may have a thought or may have knowledge where I may get on my phone. And I may have, I have a person at my office that's designated to come here to bring me things if I need them. Okay. So, um, you know, there's no one else outside. I don't know. Um, but if I need to, if you're talking about something, it's like, that makes sense to me because of something I saw. I don't, I'm just giving you a suggestion. I may text somebody, hey, bring me X, Y, or Z. And they may come and we may show you. I mean, that's how it's going to work out. So um, obviously we had to relocate, you know, our office here. Yeah. Um, so logistics is a little problem. It's no big deal. You're, we're a mile away. I have people waiting there. Okay. Um, stuff like that. So I just want to make sure you understand that I don't want it to distract you. Okay. Sure. So... Um, I, I, and I apologize. I feel like everything's distracting me because <laughs> I can see outside right now. <laughs> Would it be, so, do you want to move somewhere? No. Do you want I, to go to the couch? Do you want to have your back to the beautiful river? I can close those if you want. What do you want to do? Let me bring distracted. Yeah, yeah. And if you see me get up or put my head down, because you know I am good at interrupting. When you're talking, <laughs> because I might think of an idea, I don't want to do that. So if you see me go on walls, or if I gotta get and get a drink of water, it's not. I will always be. I'm not gonna leave the area, but it's mainly because me, because I'm like, oh, I really want to say something. So I don't, I'm not gonna do that. Are you allowed? You, he can talk, right? Yeah, but we don't want to interrupt more for you. Because even on the first day, I was asking you questions, and I was like, oh, that's not important. Let's get to this other thing. And they're like, no. Let's, you know, <laughs> no it's not, I was like, no, no, no. We need to know this. When you were using the restroom, I had I had to admonish Keith. Keith, okay, <laughs> don't interrupt her. <laughs> okay. It's so, the interrupting that breaks your thought process. Yeah. It's not the question. It's just <clears throat> sometimes the amount of questions and on questions on top of questions before mm -hmm. you can fully answer. Um, we're trained to remember, like, wait for that pause, like, once somebody's done talking. And then we can interject, like where everybody else just wants the answer tomorrow. No, let's just get it. Why? 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 Like, was it green? Was it That's yellow? Me. Was it black? Ooh, what, where do I win now? I don't get it. We got this. Um, so we're not monitoring you for doing <laughs> that. We're just trying to keep your your mind going on the same track it was a second ago. Okay. Um, the other thing that we I need to add, we have somebody available also um, with a camera that has alternate light sources. Uh, that it can pick up the different bruises that even though we can't see, I don't know if we can see like, I don't know how it works. I know it's got lots and lots of different lenses um, and it will take photos all at once so it can bring up the different, so like the, the layers of bruising, the layers of bruising, the scar on the back, hopefully to be able to pick up what exactly that is because we're still unclear. Yeah, um, all the scabs are gone now. Yeah. Sure That's something we can, before we get done, we'll, I mean, we're, we'll test that. Topic. That's a camera you already used, or no? no. It's oh. one that we have. It's one we got from DOJ. Okay. As it takes photographs, it has um, infrared and it has built-in filters. So as it takes the photographs, it does it. Because right now the photographs we have, we have to run them through a filter. Uh, and so I was gonna say she took a lot of pictures. She did. Yeah. No. Okay. And the and the photographs of the scarring on the back, it we ran it through several filters and we're able to clear it up a little bit. But we DOJ has another camera that actually, as it takes the picture, it has its stuff built in, so it's more refined. So that's probably something we can worry about later this afternoon when we get done talking. If you're cool with female female crime scene tech, come over, take some more photographs of you to try to help you guys get some answers to some questions. Yes. So that I, we're not gonna go there now. Yeah. But <laughs> it's for later. It's, it's, <laughs> once we get to that point today, we can. She's on standby at my office. She can be here. It's not the same one. No, okay. It's, it's one of my our girls. It's not right. the yellow. She's a good. She's a good lady. I afterwards we you talking about Stephanie at Yolo County. Yeah. She's a great lady. I'd love to have her work for me. Yeah, I like she's her awesome. a lot. She um, was great. But I have another lady. So I don't know. What we were talking. I don't think so. Uh, bigger lady with the short dark hair. Short dark hair. She was taking pictures and swabbing. I never saw. So anyways, that's she was great. Before we leave today, we can approach that and have her come over here and privately take photographs and look at that stuff and get that stuff squared away. So hopefully we can get some better answers for you. Okay. So, you cool? Yeah, I was gonna ask a question. Go ahead. <laughs> she wanted to see some photos. I mean, we took some on my phone only because there's been a couple times where she goes, 
she'll remember something. Oh, I, I hit my head on the part of a car, or I remember yeah. this. And I think if she did see these yeah. photos, so I was wondering if she would ever get a chance to see the good photos, not my yeah. little iPhone ones. Uh, did you bring? I just have pictures of the cars. I didn't bring those. Those are this. I can have those brought over. I can have them. But yeah, that's why the laptop's here. So okay. at whatever point, if you think at some point, if I saw a picture of this, it would probably help me remember. Then we'll pull the picture. Okay. okay so I'm giving you a lot of latitude here. Okay. <laughs> this isn't so. Rather than I think we all have an understanding of the game game rules and plan and. And it doesn't matter. I can always stop you and ask questions in the middle anyway. Yeah, absolutely. So. And at the end of this, you can ask, ask whatever questions you want. We will do our best. So we'll get started. A lot of this again was just really I. Um, Twelve twenty one. I don't. I mean, I still, I, I still don't know you guys. Okay. <laughs> um, but, um, but I have absolute faith in my husband, and um, I think um, taking him away would make things harder. So, I, I feel like it will be easier with Keith. Absolutely. Here. Yeah. In the second video we did on Sherry, we went over the interview where Sherry was confronted with proof that she faked the entire kidnapping with James Reyes. And in that video, I discussed how Sherry had previously put a lot of weight on Keith being with her throughout the process. She wanted him to hear everything because she loved him, and he was her safety blanket, or so she said. She had built Keith's relationship up with her to such a degree that by the final interview, when she was asked if she wanted Keith to leave the room before they told her what they had, that was akin to the police asking her to admit wrongdoing. It's interesting to see now, as Keith is entirely devoted to Sherry, that she is feigning devotion to him. So if you want him here, here. And I, I still, I'm mm -hmm. feeling very nervous because I still don't really know you guys. I mean, I kind of do. Is but... there anything we can do to help you feel more comfortable with us? Not. <laughs> um, I told Kyle like, well, it is helpful because obviously it he seemed like he, he felt like you were concerned about Keith not being here or not. Oh, yeah. I can't be alone with so, people I don't know. So he's here. Yeah. He's here for the duration. That's, he's, that's so I'm cool with it. We so, weren't even worried about it. Despite saying that she can't be alone with people she doesn't know, at this point she had been alone plenty of times with people she didn't know and according to court documents didn't appear to be in a distressed state. More than that, her expressions betray what she is trying to portray. Her body language might be small and shy, but she maintains eye contact. Her rate of blinking stays the same, and she is goofing around and making jokes out of the situation throughout the conversation. She isn't paranoid or scared, despite what she is saying. That wasn't, that wasn't even a topic or question that we've even brought up, because from day one, I already told Kyle, he's going to be there. That's a no-brainer already, and that's, she, she needs him there. So, you know, that question is... I'm on the table. Okay. And if you have any questions that'll help you, we're we're here for you. So if you have questions you want to ask of us, personal questions, make you do that, we're we're here for you. Um, things come up later, things come up right now. I'm hundred percent here for you. Um, like I was for Keith, every time he called me, I called him back as soon as I could. I texted him. I never let a text go unanswered. Um, I will continue to be that. I'm still yours. I'm still Keith. I'm I'm here until this thing's over. Even once it's over, you guys still have there. This, I'm a permanent part of your life now. <laughs> as long as you want it. Whether you want it or not. <laughs> uh, even once this case gets done, they, they go to prison, um, we wrap it all up. I am I will still work for the sheriff's office. I'm still here for you. Uh, In the last interview Sherry would give to authorities, she would state that she didn't want her kidnappers to go to jail. And that's why she had been flaky regarding information she gave. She claimed that she felt as if the person who had kidnapped her and let her go saved her life. And because of that noble woman, she was able to see her kids every day. However, when it's mentioned to her here, she doesn't flinch or react. She believes that they will never find out that she faked the kidnapping and she will never need to make up an excuse as to why she doesn't want that person brought in. So she had no reaction to the idea that they will be caught or captured. Her lack of reaction to being told that is telling, as most victims would feel some kind of relief upon hearing that their case is being taken as seriously as Sherry's is. I mean, I've, this is my, what is it, 16? 
this is my seventh year in investigations for the most part. I was uh, a frontline detective like him uh, for three years and then I promoted to sergeant and so now I oversee the unit. And from 2009, 2010, you know, some of my cases when I started working majors, um, homicides and stuff like that, um, I still have contact with uh, family members on anniversary dates with those people. I still call them and say, hey, uh, just check in with you, see how you're doing. There's a man that lives in Wisconsin. Uh, his daughter was murdered. And every August, uh, I give him a call, or he calls me. It's usually he calls me ahead of time when he's on the road. He says, hey, I was thinking about you today. I said, yeah. And it's just it's a five-minute conversation. And because that's the impact that this stuff has. There's, uh, I think, all but maybe two cases that I have contact with people where they just call out of the blue and say, hey, I saw your name in the I get I saw your name in the news today, and wanted to call and tell you, hey, it's thinking of you and good luck. Uh, I got several of those calls in the last couple of weeks um, from down south. Uh, so it's, you know, a lot of times people have involvement or little involvement with law enforcement. They see the uniform, you, you sign your ticket, and you go pay your fine, right? I mean, that's that's usually the most extent that everyone has with an officer. Is the officer nice? Well, yeah, he's just doing his job. Then there's the other side where you have these officers, detectives, investigators, whatever you want to call them, that are invested in people's lives. That have a, okay, I don't have to care for you. I don't have to care for Keith. I don't have to care for anybody, right? That's that's our God-given ability. We don't have to care for people. But there's something that grows inside of us as we get mature, as we tenure as law enforcement, when we think, you know what, there's a little bit more than just, you know, writing tickets and taking people to jail every day where, um, you know, there's an investment. There's good stuff, too. Yes. In there somewhere. Yes. So, you know, um, you know, I know Kyle's heart. Um, Kyle and I have had one-to-one conversations. Uh, Kyle and I have had teared-up conversations. Okay. Kyle and I have been shaking our heads at the same time, trying to figure things out. I mean, there's emotion behind it. We're just not, just not, you know, brazen, you know, cops that just don't have feelings or care. Okay. I've cried in the shower. I try not to cry at home a lot in front of the kids because they don't like seeing it. I've cried in the shower because of you, because of frustration. I'm tearing up now. Okay. I mean, that's, that's the level of care that you have. I don't tell you. I mean, you know, there's, <clears throat> there's a heart involved when we actually care or give a shit about people. Okay. And for whatever reason, God has uh, allowed it that he and I are on your team, that he's on your team, and that I'm allowing him to run with it. So, I mean, you don't know who we are. That's who I am. I know that's who kind of And he is. And he says you're okay, you're important. That's what I That's where we're at. Yeah. The investigators are trying to gain Sherry's trust, again with the idea that she is the victim of a horrific crime. His statement about being emotionally invested in cases, so much so that he often gets emotional, was made to assure her of his moral character, and she, for the most part, politely took the information in because it does not matter to her. She doesn't want to like or trust these officers. She doesn't care what they have been through or why they are invested in her case. Again, she knows that it can't be solved and she believes she set up the entire scenario in a manner that will make it appear that she never got justice. So when the police are trying to convey how seriously they are taking the case, and how they empathize with all that she's been through, she politely brushes off that information as if they were just telling her about parking instructions. So if you want to... It's, also, it's the ball's in your court. Um, I, I don't know... Um, there's certain things that are very difficult to explain. There's certain things that it's for me. It's a feeling. It's not facts. Okay. So if it's if it if there's something that's not a fact, if there's something that I was feeling because I don't speak Spanish, <laughs> but there was a lot of body language, and I can understand body language. Okay. So there's things for me that I feel went a certain way. Are those okay. things that you want yep. or are those things you want me to hold back because they're not facts? You tell me anything you want. Okay. You tell us you tell us what's on your mind, what's on your heart, and what you thought, what you felt, what you smelled, what you you tell us everything. Okay. And then we'll put them through the investigation and through follow up questions. So to you everything is important. Yes, it yes. Okay. Yep. There's nothing there's no stupid comments, there's no stupid questions, there's no stupid answers. 
everything. I want to know everything on your that, mind. Now. See, and that's because I'm thinking about everything a lot. And that's where I'm like, is that important? Yes. Is that important? I don't know. Maybe I should move on because that's probably not important. But then something's <laughs> like, no, that's important. And when you get so. into little, little cases, big cases, little cases, all, all fall on one little thing. All of them. Like, no matter how far you've gone back, no matter how much, um, it's that one little thing. You know what? There was a, there was a red, uh, red couch or a red um, throw pillow, like here. Like in the big scheme of things, how many people have a red throw pillow? Probably a couple. But how many are going to have a red throw pillow that I showed up to? It shouldn't be anybody for us. It shouldn't be anybody for me. <laughs> and, no, and just so you know, there's only one person at my office, that, two people that know that we're here. The detective and my lieutenant. UPS. Ah, UPS guy. Some guys running away. So with. With that, it's that one little piece that maybe that throws it all together, and we don't want to miss that. Okay. Uh, to his okay. Also, my skin is still very itchy everywhere, so I apologize. Everything is itchy all everywhere. No problem. <laughs> um, okay. Where would you like to start? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, so on November 2nd. 2016, what happened? Let's start us off on the day. From the beginning. Yeah, start with there and see what happens. Let's talk about the Christmas present <laughs> with Keith. Okay. Sherry has been asked to describe what should be the worst day in her life, to go over all of the facts of what happened to her when she was kidnapped and trafficked by two deranged people. This is a traumatic event. And this interview should be incredibly stressful, so much so that the first 20 minutes were the police assuring her they could stop any time she needed and that she was in a safe environment. In most circumstances like this one, where a victim is recounting what occurred, they will try to get through the sequence of events as quickly as possible. I was running. A van pulled up to me. They grabbed me and pulled me inside. Quick, simple, and undetailed unless they are asked for more. This is because remembering the event can be traumatic, but Sherry doesn't do that. She starts with a small joke. This doesn't immediately indicate guilt, mind you, as plenty of victims will try to lighten the tension and stress they are feeling with a joke. Humor can be an effective coping mechanism. However, with the knowledge that Sherry is lying, this one instance becomes very important. Um, I started wrapping a Christmas present for Keith, the little American flag pillow that Tyler and I had picked out the night before at Kohl's. Um, and I couldn't find any tape. I had taped one side, ran out of tape, and then couldn't find any more tape anywhere else. Got very frustrated, left it on the ground and left it open because there was no more tape to complete the wrapping of it. Um, one of the reasons that Sherry was so quickly reported missing was because it seemed that she had vanished without a trace, leaving a present half-wrapped in the middle of the home, leaving things out that she would normally put away, as well as not picking up the kids, made Keith know that something had happened to her. Sherry wanted to leave the house in a manner that would get attention, and so, when discussing what happened when she was kidnapped, she starts with the first thing she did that day to set up her kidnapping. Did my usual... Uh, did my usual routine, fed the chickens, uh, clean the house, clean everything, just the usual. Nothing, you know, text message my husband <laughs> to come home for lunch, <laughs> which it. it you know, looking back, it's quite embarrassing. <laughs> Keith's like, thanks for, you know, that last text message. Honey, will you please come home to have sex with your wife for lunch? <laughs> um, yeah. So you text him to come home for lunch, and we're, and we're cool. Okay, we, we know the connotation. <laughs> gotcha. 
Um, oh, that morning was <clears throat> weird too. Tyler had woken up from a dream, and he—I don't—I I don't know if either of your children have ever done this, but when your kids wake up and they're like shaky and oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. Tyler had woken up um, very shaky and wanting Keith and um, and was very scared but couldn't remember why he was scared. He was just scared and he wanted Keith. And that was um, kind of an odd way for him to wake up. Um, so you went to daycare that morning, right? You remember that? Yeah. yeah. Tell me about your drive to daycare. Isn't that ordinary? Just the normal day? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just the normal, fed the kids breakfast. Um, Dropped them off at Pandora's, nothing unusual. It wasn't even a hard goodbye. Sometimes they're like, no, don't leave me. It wasn't even like a hard, difficult goodbye. Okay. And then when you left daycare, tell me about what you did after daycare. Drove back home. Okay. Um, did my usual. Put on my boot shoes, went out to the chicken coop. Clean the coop, um, and then just started my usual cleaning of everything. Okay. Uh, Keith had been coming home for lunch pretty often, um, and, and had been doing like the at-home lunches, which has been nice. We've gotten our little alone mommy mm -hmm. daddy time. <laughs> <laughs> um, time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it, it been it had been nice that he's been you know coming home pretty early and stuff like that. Um, Anything out of the ordinary on your way home? Anything out of the ordinary uh, when you got home or out taking care of the chickens? Any, anything that caught your eye or hear anything out of the ordinary? Mm -hmm. Chickens, by the way. Uh, how many chickens do you have? We used to have 10. Okay, source, sorry, sore subject. We lost a couple. Gotcha. Yeah, no, we used to have 10. Um, I have chickens, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. We used to have every type of chicken. That's fascinating. I'm pretty sure it was the two Americanas that mm. we lost, one of which was one of my favorite ones, yeah. Lady Hawk. <laughs> and America. Um, my favorite chicken is still there, though, which is she's human size. Um, is that the silver lace? Do uh, you have a silver lace? We have a black, an all-black Orpington yeah. who's gigantic yeah. and soft and... Um, Violet's so cute because she, you know, she wants to feed the chickens all the time. Mm -hmm. And the kids are great with the chickens. And Tyler can actually do a checkup head to toe mm. with chickens. And Violet would feed um, uh, Mary Bell. And Mary Bell would kind of walk up to her because she wants you to pick her up like a baby and cuddle her. Mm -hmm. And Violet would be like, this giant chicken's chasing me. <laughs> and then she'll run and Mary Bell won't, won't chase her. She just wants to be with her. So then they're just like running around in circles and Violet's getting chased by a giant chicken. So it's adorable, but yes, no, the chickens are, we love our chickens. Oh, yeah. What kind of chickens do you have? I have, uh, I have two, um, uh, hang on a second. I wasn't thinking about talking about chickens right now. Um, Rhode Island Red, Sussex, Sussex. No, uh, Delaware, uh, okay. whites, uh -huh. uh, they're all hens. Uh -huh. I have two Delawares. Um, then I have uh, two uh, sex links, the red ones, the red stars, which mm -hmm. they're bred between the, they're the sex links of a uh, uh, Delaware hen and a uh, Rhode Island rooster. And then I have a black star, and she's crossed between a, uh, a barred rock and a Rhode Island rooster. And then I have uh, a barred rock. I had two, lost one, raccoon. Uh, and she's, she's big. She's got a, the comb on her is so huge. It like hangs over her eye. I mean, it's like a, it's like she's wearing a red beret. It's, she, uh, but she's, she's the loving one. She'll come up to you and want to sit with you. Mm -hmm. And then I have a, a little Rhode Island red, uh, used to have two raccoon. Um, and that's, so I just asked, I have the seven. So, and they're molting right now. So they look like Oh, they're, they're a mess when such, they molt. They're, they're so, so ugly so, when they molt. Yeah, I, I went out yesterday and was checking them, make sure that they're all cool and checking for bumble feet and you know, all that stuff. And Tyler, like, my four-year-old can do that yeah. right so now, I was like, which is really cool. Thank God I'm not trying to sell you guys because nobody would buy them because <laughs> they look so horrible right now. Yeah. But so anyways, I, I, 
they're they're fun. It's my thing. I've had them for about two years. It's so wonderful with our children, yeah. and that's something I love very much. Oh, yeah. Very much attached to that because, and that was um, you know the 4-H and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It's wonderful, and it's so great that Tyler, you know, he knows. He even mm-hmm. like knows like that vent of that chicken. That chicken's not laying an egg. I'm like, what? How do you know this already? You're that's four good. years old. Yeah. That's very fun. That's yeah, that's it. good for them and all the trimming. So sorry, I'm going this way. That's right. I, I pulled you that way because I brought up the chicken thing. No, it's nice to talk about something nice. Um, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, wrapped up present, got frustrated, changed into running clothes. Okay. Um, I love so much that my husband knows my clothing so well that he knew what I was wearing. Sherry does not love this. In fact, it seems to subtly piss her off that Keith knows what she was wearing when she went missing. And what were you wearing? I was wearing that pink Nike hooded sweatshirt with the thumb holes that I hate. (laughs) And the black tight I say they're leggings because they're a little thicker than that. The black tight, uh, stripey, not really stripey, just kind of black and white speckled, we'll say. Okay. And my black and white checkered, are they Under Armour or Nike? I think they're Under Armour, right? Under Armour tennis shoes. On the pink top, is it all pink or is it with gray? No. There's pink on the, up to the shoulders, and then it's gray here, and I'm pretty sure the hood is pink. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the pink, and it has those little annoying, trendy thumb holes that I don't like. <laughs> yeah. I've tried it. I've tried it, but I guess it's for snowboarding. So they keep your sweatshirt underneath your uh, butt. So you put those in. So it's only it's a sn- for snowboarding, from what I understood, because I was getting mad at it. Like, what? Put it on a running jacket. Um, yeah. yeah. It looks cool. I don't think it's cool. <laughs> I think it looks obnoxious, but yeah. He's wearing gloves. Oh. Running gloves, I'm assuming. Yeah. No. Really wasn't wearing running gloves. And then. Um, did my usual, started my app. I've been training um, for a race. It's been, well, okay. I got implants and it's been a long time since I got to run because you have to heal from the implants. Um, and me and running are, I, I want to be a better runner. I like to run, but it's difficult for me. Um, so like getting back in the swing of it, I had an app that I would use that does, you know, run this far walk, run this far walk. And it amps you up to like a 5k. Um, because a few years back I had done the, um, the Casa superhero Mm -hmm. run. And, um, I didn't think I was going to be anywhere close to it, but I wanted to get back to, um, doing that because I loved that run. It was, it was really fun. Um. So, yeah, was doing the, I want to say it's called the 5K Runner app mm-hmm. that I was mm-hmm. using. Um, and then I, there's a song I listen to every time I run. Um, so I put the song on. What's that song? Uh, our wedding song. <laughs> it's a good pace keeper because there's a couple songs I listen to, but that one is the only one that I listen to that doesn't make me run too fast. And it puts me in good mood. Um, so that would be uh, Michael Buble. Everything. Their wedding song. Um, stretched a little bit on the porch, like I usually do. Started running. Saw the two, maybe there was three. Uh, guys cutting the tree at what's his name's house? The guy that did our Toby. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Toby's house. Uh, was on was on the left side of the road. Then a car was coming over that hump right before Connie's. So I changed to the other side of the road, waved to that person. Uh, turned right onto from okay. So down Casa, 
centered right onto sunrise. You're doing good. Did you see anybody outside when you were running? Not after Connie's. I did see people outside when I was running, but not after Connie's. Um, was there any view, any other vehicles besides Connie's? Or the one it wasn't after? Connie's. It was a Sorry. neighbor driving down in front of Connie's. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, but I didn't know who that was. I oh. hadn't recognized her before. It was a female. I didn't Sounds like a before. female that was coming out to pick up her niece okay. in that area. We talked. We spoke. I think you said that. And yeah. She was. She was on her way out to I think, pick up her knees, take her to the mall. Well, so. everybody waves in our neighborhood, too. Mm -hmm. When you go buy cars or anything, everybody kind of, you know, does the wave in our neighborhood. Um, but I can see. I always look at Christina's parents' house, which mm -hmm. is the one um, right when you get the paved area. Mm -hmm. um, because I grew up with Christina and her parents were there. And I lived literally around the corner from them my entire life. My childhood, I lived around the corner from them. And now in my adult life, I live around the corner from them. So whenever I go there, I'm always looking at their house because I'm always waiting to wave to them or see them or um, didn't see them. Um, didn't see anyone at the Bourget's. Um, yeah, because we know a lot of people in the neighborhood. So and I look for that because I like to wave to people. Right. You're um, a stay at home mom. You're, you're home. Yeah. You get to I, see people. Uh, yeah, didn't see anybody else. Um, did my absolutely usual, uh, got to the mailboxes or, um, just before the mailboxes started to slow down that I was just about to transition into walk. So it's run, walk, run, walk. Right. When I got towards the mailboxes was right before it was going to say, you know, we have listened to the app. It's oh, pretty God. powerful. Yeah. <laughs> now walk. Yeah. Yeah. Now slow You're down. You're halfway through. Right. You're yeah. doing good. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a it's a funny app. Yeah. So you get almost to the mailboxes and you think. Sorry, about, my lips are like clack cracking and. Do you need some water? No. No, everything's like just. So you're about Painful to, right here, sorry. <laughs> you're good. Uh, you're about to the mailboxes. About to the mailboxes. And these are the mailboxes near? At the end of the Sunrise Drive. My, my mailbox. Right. And if I, I forgot to tell you this one tidbit when we laid out the ground rules. Sometimes we're going to ask some dumb questions for clarification. Like I just asked because I, I knew it was there. But for our case management, sometimes we have to ask clarifying questions. So if you... If I ask a question or Kyle asks a question, you're like, are you really that dumb? You know, it's that mailbox. Okay. It's something you probably have a form that needs to be it's, filled out for something? Or no, something, it's just or? it's because in court processes, so if you don't mind, I'll just digress for a minute and take a break. No, that's okay. You say you were running to your mailboxes or to the mailboxes, and we, and we move on through that. And two years down the road, he or I are in court, and somebody wants to ask us questions about the mailboxes, well, how do you know it was her mailboxes? Did you ask her if it was the mailboxes? Um, so that's the kind of crap we got to deal with sometimes. Got it. Okay. So okay. that's why we ask some of those dumb questions because we get not so much on the prosecution side, but she knows what we're talking about. <laughs> Defense attorneys uh, right. to try to poke holes, to try to uh, Well, and do Keith and I had so had that, yeah, Keith and I have had that conversation as well because I told him, one of um, you know things that I'm uh, so b before all of this, I watched those shows. Mm -hmm. I watched those shows, and I you know, and I've read Elizabeth Smart's book. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. I was the weird stay at home mom that watched the like you know random. Mm -hmm. What are those shows called? Uh, the true crime story. Yeah, Taken. but the yeah, like the uh, reality mm -hmm. reality TV. I was like this stupid. I wasn't soap operas, but it was reality TV. I watched all that stuff, so I, um, like, I'm thinking about that now, where I'm like, oh, my 
God, someone is going to be on her side defending her against all of this crap. And because I watch those shows, so I understand what you are saying. That's, and that's where I'm coming from when we right. ask. Again, with the talk of prosecution, Sherry has no qualms about discussing forcing an innocent woman through the court system over her lies, because as far as she is aware, that will never happen. But she is more than comfortable with the idea of a Hispanic woman being profiled in this case. Her noting that she read Elizabeth Smart's book and knows about Elizabeth, a woman who was actually kidnapped, is demented, as that means she read the book discussing her trauma and thought, how could this benefit me? When, if, you, if we ask a question, like, are you really that dense? You don't know which mailbox is this I'm talking about. It's not because I'm dense. It's because I'm safeguarding us down the road so we, so we can... Right. Not have to deal with all that I shit. I understand. Sorry for cussing. It's just, that's what it is. I've been cussing more than you have lately. No. So and, I, and that's another thing that I'm thinking of about, you know, like, am I going to be able to do that without running out of my seat and choking someone? Well, that's... I mean, it's just, and that's, that's difficult, too, for me, because I told Keith, like, I, and that's another thing I'm scared about. I don't know you guys. I don't know mm -hmm. if you're in my corner. I know my husband. I know my husband's in my corner, but, um, you know, there was a lot of other things, and I know that you guys know everything about everything. Yeah. And that's embarrassing. And well. And Yucky, and that's weird for me. That's weird for me. This is very weird for me. Yeah. Because I know that you know yeah, everything no about everything, and that's... Well, and, the, and I know Keith... Awkward. I know. Sherry is stressing that she wants to know that everyone she talks to is in her corner is unnatural, as most victims of a crime like this wouldn't feel as if the police and authorities don't believe they were kidnapped or victimized in any way. At this point, no one has even asserted, publicly or privately, that they don't believe Sherry. The public doesn't know the details of the case yet, so coming forward and accusing her of lying would be ridiculous. At this point, the assertion that Sherry set up her own kidnapping, staged a crime scene, got an ex-boyfriend to pick her up, drive her over 100 miles to his home, stayed below the radar for weeks, physically battered and branded herself would be ludicrous. And absolutely, no one has asserted that. But because Sherry is lying, she is being hypervigilant. She wants to know who was on her side, who was believing her, who thinks she's lying, and why they think she's lying, plus more. When she says, I know that you know everything about everything, it comes off as aggravated and upset, because they know more than she wants them to. They know that she sent her husband a text, they know what she was wearing, and they know things that she ultimately didn't have control over. And it's awkward because, again, she thinks that they could know she has done this before, but to a lesser degree. She wants to be in control of what's happening, what people think, and she wants to know where she stands. We all know what we're that's the best way to say that. That's very we, awkward for me. Well, I, I, I get it. I understand that. Kyle understands that. I think we all understand that. But... Um, that's that's not a problem for us as far as having to deal with that. It's not, we're not looking bad at anybody. We're not casting judgment on anyone. It is what it is, okay? Stuff happens. The problem is, is that that stuff is out there. We need to capture it, we need to clean it, and we need to be accountable to it as far as the information and move on from it. It is what it is. No one's perfect. No one does everything right. I, I mean... There's, there's no problems as far as that stuff goes on that you've alluded to that we know about, okay? That, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about we'll talk about stuff. We'll talk about people we talk to. I got no problem with that. I'll, I'll tell you everything that I can. There's nothing, Kyle will tell you everything that he can, okay? It may hurt, okay? I mean, it, yes. <laughs> and I'm empathetic to that. I know Keith's empathetic to that. But the bottom line is, is how we move on from here, how things get rehabilitated, and how lives get put back together, and how we all get uh, move on from this and become stronger. Okay, so all that stuff that you've alluded to, not a problem for me, not a problem for Kyle. Okay, okay? Keith's right here with you. Okay, we're all good. Okay, is this mine? This is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when those topics and, and that stuff comes up between us here at the table. 
I want to point out just for a moment how attentive Keith is being. Many people have claimed that Sherry had to fake her own kidnapping as Keith was actually abusive. Sherry herself has stated he wasn't, but due to her past claims and people's inability to fathom what she would do to herself, they believe this narrative. However, throughout this interrogation, he has gotten her water, opened the water for her, and gone above and beyond to try and make her feel comfortable. It's incredibly upsetting to watch him continue to believe her in this context, knowing that it will be years until he will find out the truth. I don't want to use that. I don't want to use the word I don't care because that has such a negative connotation. But in reality, that's just when I say I, I don't care, or when Sack House says I don't care, it means it's all good. It's, it is what it is. And we're not going to, well, what about this? And this is not true. We're not going to do that crap. That's not, the, that's not what we're here for. But it is part and parcel to this investigation. And we found it. We found it. We investigated it. We ruled it out. So that's that's how these things go. Like when dot and the I's cross the T's, we're, we went and found everything we can for several different reasons. Um, it's like how the how this investigation tore out. There was really three things going on so, uh, <coughs> during this investigation. We didn't want to skip one thing. We didn't want to skip over one detail. Um, because that's, that's when we make mistakes, that's when we miss it. And that's when we move so beyond it that we can't even come back to it. Um, so, I, yeah. Well, so, I mean, even to the point that, what was it, on Wednesday? Uh, somebody went to jail because of this investigation. <laughs> the guy up off of Copper Canyon. I walked an arrest warrant through on a registration person who was playing games with us. And we went and paid him a visit and searched through his nasty hoof. I mean, all of us almost pewed from the filth he was living in, and he went to jail. I mean, so we, I mean, that's a registrant up off the Copper Canyon. I don't know if you're aware of that. We took that guy to jail. Did Kyle tell you about it? My team, uh... <laughs> Somebody told you about it? Uh, so we booted his door in. We booted, we've got great friends. We booted, we booted his door in and woke, and woke him up, and, and he's, uh, I don't know if he's still sitting in jail, because I haven't worried about it, because obviously he's off my radar right now, but, so... Uh, what Kyle's saying, we've we've done a lot of work. Um, so I I don't care about that stuff and how on the outside people may say or whatever, but on the inside here, it is what it is, and we're and we're on your side. Okay, we're here to defend. We're here to look for people that have earned the right. And I don't care about you know the whole what people say about. <laughs> it's easy to say that. I, don't ca I care about here. Well, I and, care about and I'm here. I imagine that those conversations have happened in the last couple of days or yes. at least been touched a little bit. Yes. And, and they're going to, and hopefully they got brought up what I told Keith from your get you. Don't look into this anymore. It's very little to nothing. It's, it's minute enough. We have to chase it. And that's what I told them. We have to look into it. We had to see it. Um, and what we investigated, we found out that it was it was minuscule, um, if anything, if you want to call it that. And that's what I told him specifically. Um, but you know, he, he, he had enough. He didn't have anything else busy. Anything else <laughs> yeah, to do that that. So, um, so it wasn't. So that was from the very get go. Right after um, that went down, um, I told Keith that uh, that it was minuscule to nothing. But we had we have to look into it. We have to. We have to sort it out, figure sure. it out. Um, and that falls on that those two lines that I told him. It was it was always we were always going down two roads. The abduction because we had nothing. Or the you know, you you possibly had left because that's the only those were the only two options that we had had. And the easiest one to look at is is if if you walked out or not. There's money, there's I can dive into you six ways from Sunday and I can find some stuff. Uh, but on this, on this rare abduction side, we're looking at chances. I'm looking at somebody driving by noticing something minute uh, and now finding that person who saw that minute detail that I need um, as opposed to yeah, there's paper on you, you're a normal, you, build, you pay your bills. Like I can find those people all the time. But now, um, and that's why that investigation was always going two ways. Um, and Keith and I talked on Saturday about that, like why, why? Because it's easier to build up evidence on things I can go see. So yes, this might have piled up, but it never went over.
because the, the abduction was so small, I couldn't find anything all through all these things. That's why that was always alive. I mean, it would never have gone away um, until I talked to you. Um, and that's why there's, there's, there's a I, lot And of, I feel like it's just, it's just a shame. Absolutely. No, it's it's things that oh. I thought about when I was oh, there. Gotcha. It's it's the shame. Yeah, and that's that's normal. So I mean, it's. I mean, it's. Another thing I'm doing. Right? That's all. Absolutely, but you know, all of us have all of all of us are adults, and all of us have had lives. Okay, mm -hmm. none of us here at this table are perfect, and it all depends upon where your hearts are and how you attack and how you address it and where you want to go from there. And that's that's between you guys. You know, that's on you, that's on Keith, okay? It's all survivable, you know, it's all, I mean, it's, if anything, make you guys stronger and you guys go on and live your happy life. And, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna here to preach to you or, you know, be your marriage therapist <laughs> counselor. I, I could, but, I could. Um, but so yeah, I mean, there's, there's some of those topics that we're gonna get to whenever they come up. If, they, if you don't bring them up, then obviously we'll ask you about them. Okay. But it's not hurtful. Okay. It's, clar it's more of clarification, and, okay. and more of clarification and advisement type stuff. Like, hey, just you know. So okay. it goes back to the conversation, the top, the question you asked me like a little while ago. Should I say? Should I not? Is it stupid? Remember that. There's not say everything. <clears throat> I mean, that's and I. That's why we're all here. That's why Keith's here. That's why. So don't worry about it. Okay. To redirect, get us back on topic. So you just about get to the mailboxes. And the mailboxes at yes. Sunrise and Old Oregon Trail. Correct. Okay. Go from there, if you can. Um, I'm before the mailboxes, I start to slow down. I see a vehicle go past. I see a vehicle go past Sunrise Drive to maybe like the front two tires are past the actual street sign and then it backs up. And I immediately have that feeling of that was weird. Um You're doing good, Sherry. If you're having a hard... My window closed down, but it was... There were no tears to wipe, but Sherry has already positioned herself incredibly well to be believed in this instance. The entire interview, she is in the fetal position, holding herself, which is consistent with self-soothing. She repeatedly wrung her hands, scratched her face, and brushed out her hair, which is also self-soothing. She asked earlier if she can close her eyes while she is talking, and now the only real indicator she needs to seem genuinely upset is tone of voice, which can be easily altered. With her eyes completely shut, all she has to do is change her voice and portray sadness, something that anyone who has watched true crime reality shows like she has would no doubt be able to do. It was a woman, and they back up, Hard time in calling. I, it's frustrating because I know I know she was wearing a hat, but I can't see the color and I can't see her clothes. With Sherry covering her face, she is covering her tracks. When people lie so severely like this, they tend to have micro-expressions that tell on them, like a duping delight smile. But Sherry eliminates the possibility of showing that by completely covering her face and letting her voice be the only indicator. It's hard to believe that this isn't deliberate, based on the past shows she has watched. The Rather focus get, on right. the small details. That's just where it, let's, let's talk about the big details. I'll make a note. He asked for time. help. I want to say it's maybe like a hey or 
something to get my attention. Is that the passenger or the, the driver? Passenger. Okay. Is the car on Sunrise right now, or is it still on no. the Old Oregon Trail? It's on. It's on Old Oregon Trail. Okay. How far away do you think you are when when that happened? Um. When what? What are you asking? When the car stops. Um, do you know how? About how close were you? Which time? It stopped twice. Once when it went past the street sign, once when it backed up. Which time were you asking? Sherry's previous emotion is no longer present in her vocals. She blew her nose, only for nothing to come out. And there are no tears present. Her eyes aren't even slightly irritated. Thankfully, this footage is in HD quality, meaning we can actually tell that there are no tears. Uh... The first time, the again, it went past Sunrise Drive sign, but not all the way, backed up and stopped. Um, I want to say there's a fire hydrant right there. Um, Keep asking small questions if that helps, or do you just want to, need to think about it? Or we can move on. I walked towards where the vehicle had backed up, but was still far enough away from it that, um, because I was still cautious, I had my phone in my right hand and my earbuds on and I took out my left to hear her and then she opened the door and then I saw the small revolver. And I immediately ducked down. I crouched down, like in a ducking, crouching. Like all the way on the ground? So like, like the fetal position while you like, like a catcher I position? mean, my knees weren't on the ground. It was almost... Um, in the yes. It was... Uh, Okay, so across the road, phones in my hand, earbud out, towards the vehicle, this, not all the way down, squatting, okay. not okay. crouching, squatting, laid my phone down, um, I can't remember if she said, we don't want to hurt you, we don't want to kill you. I can't remember exactly if it's, we don't want to something, we don't want to something, we don't want to something. And then I put my phone down, and as soon as I put it down, I was so mad because I couldn't call my husband, and as soon as I put it down, I... back up to the table. And then I got up and went this direction. And I can't remember, I can't remember lifting my leg. I can't remember the back door open. 
Take a drink of water if you need to. And I want to run something by you and see if this might be able to help a little bit. Just breath, do some more. You're, you're, you're good. You're recalling things from like your first person view, correct? And you're going through, you're seeing it through your own eyes. Do you understand what I mean by that? You're doing good. Okay. But as you're going through this, you're 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 pulling your memory from the back side of your head and trying to remember everything. And sometimes it goes back to your brain saying, I can't get there right now. It's kind of like a computer. You click on it, and the browser pops up and it says not responding. Right? We've all been there. Okay. So sometimes your brain says, We're not accessing that part right now because it's not time. We're not ready for it. So I've done it in the past uh, with different cases where you look at it from a different point of view, okay? Because your mind, your body uses different parts of your brain to access different pieces of information, okay? Believe it or not, that's what happens. <clears throat> so it may sound corny, it may sound silly, but sometimes it works and sometimes it helps the person telling the story. And for like this instance, um, if going back to before you see the car, if there was a bird, a bluebird, a robin, whatever bird you pick, sitting on the fence line, sitting on the mailbox, sitting on the telephone line, or sitting in the tree, and this bird blinked. Like when I said I think there was a fire hydrant right there. Yeah, kind of. But okay. if, if there, let's, let's pretend. Okay? And you have to roll with me on this because it does work, it does help sometimes. If there was a bluebird sitting up here in the tree, and the bluebird sees you running down the road, and then the bluebird sees this car come up. Can you can you imagine in your mind, looking at it from the bluebird's perspective, what is that bluebird seeing going on? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how you would like me to explain it to you, if you currently. Can. Okay. If, if if that will help you, because it's and I'll refer to that as the bluebird perspective. Okay. Okay. So do you understand what I'm saying? So if there was a bird out there. Sitting up there, fat, dumb, and happy, doing his thing. And the bird walks by and says, oh, here comes that pretty lady running down the street. And this bluebird's just watching this whole thing and just sees it. Okay, we could use a camera. We could use whatever. But I'm going to use a bird because I think, I think it fits. Okay. What is that bluebird seeing on that day? So roll us back from whatever point you feel is appropriate. Running to the mailboxes, cutting diagonally. I didn't cut diagonally until the car, because the car, the vehicle stopped, backed up, and then stopped again. And then I cut diagonally, but was at the grassy, I stopped at the grassy area, squatted, pulled out my hair, had my hands up. That is it. Does the bluebird see which side of the car you got in on? The, I, well, the car didn't move after it stopped, so I would, I would say that would be the passenger side. Okay. But you don't know. It's I just don't a, remember. That's fine. I don't, and that, I don't even remember the back door opening. Okay. And when you're talking about back door, you're talking about side door or hatch? Or do you know? The the passenger side of the vehicle, there was two doors. Okay. I don't remember the back door. The rear passenger door. Correct, opening. Do you see yourself getting in to that mm -hmm. part of the car? No. What's the next thing you remember? What's the bluebird see the, where now? Does the bluebird see which way the car goes? Or what's the car do next? No. It wasn't what I saw, it was what I felt. I was very nauseous. Okay. And cold. What's the next thing you remember seeing or 
hearing. Smelling laundry detergent on the pillowcase that was over my head. Case, pillowcase, hood, sheet. Do you know when something? That, do you know when that was put on your head? No. Do you remember where you were when you realized it was on your head? The floor of floor. the vehicle on my side. Is the vehicle moving or stationary? The vehicle is moving. Were you asked to put it on or did somebody put it on you? I woke up with it on. You're doing fine. This is good right here. Okay. Do you remember, was there filtered light coming through your, the hood? Do you know what I mean by that? Shadows from the road? Okay. Yes, it was light. Do you have a sense of speed that you're traveling? It was windy. Okay. Windy roads make me nauseous. Okay. Any recollection of time and distance from before you stopped? And tell me more about I that. I remember, wake, that, that's what, it, the first thing I remember is the nausea and waking up and being, and trying to trying to move my wrists hurt really badly and my hips were very achy. I'm doing fine. Do you need anything? Do you remember getting out of the car? No. What's your next memory? Feeling very cold. Were you clothed? Yes. I had the only original item I had was my underpants. Describe those, please. Uh, white Hanes underpants. What size? Small. I think that's for that brand's a 5S. Are they like uh, bikini cut, standard cut? Oh, you know what I mean? Uh, Just what, what style are they? White cotton. cotton white, white cotton. White cotton Hanes 5, I think they want to say 5S. I, can you shoot them right in the same brand right now? <laughs> well, maybe next time you take a break, why don't you double check, see what they are. Yeah. <laughs> we'll hold off on that for now. It's important to note that Sherry's eyes are not irritated, despite the fact that she's been rubbing them harshly throughout the interview. She is trying to make herself cry and to make her actions more in line to what she is portraying, but coming up short repeatedly. Can I ask some follow-up questions? Can I maybe take a break from going forward? Yes. Yeah. When you went for the run, how many times did you play through the wedding song? Maybe two. Maybe. It's hard because that app interrupts everything. <laughs> when that app, it when has that app, instructions. So when that, slow down and walk. When that, when that <laughs> app says slow down, does it shut your music off? Yes. And so then you. Well, don't. I don't want to say it shuts it off. It muffles it. It talks over it. Okay, but it doesn't doesn't do a hard stop. It just will uh, will overplay on it, and then right. once he's done talking, and it goes back to the music. Then it goes back to the music. Yes, it doesn't pause it to talk. I think it just talks over it. Sorry, I'm just thinking of some things about your phone when we found it. So, okay. so would you when I was looking up, I was I was looking at my own Bluebird. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> okay, would you replay the Michael Bublé song for the majority of the run? 
Or would you? It was on repeat. Yeah. Okay. I didn't download music to my phone. I didn't really, because right. I listened to Pandora <laughs> and Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. um, but that's one that's actually on my phone. So it's I didn't have like a wide variety of music for it to go through. And besides, I like listening to that song because it keeps me at a good pace for jogging. Because um, usually when I listen to other, then I start running faster and then I wear myself out faster because I'm like, yeah. you know, running to disco music, <laughs> jogging faster. Um, yeah. Prior to that day's run, okay, prior to the, that day was November 2nd. Mm -hmm. When did you run last before that? When was it? God, I don't like to run when it rains and it had been raining. Right. Would you say uh, three plus days a week? Any independent recollection at all? It wasn't the day before, right? I don't think so. I think it was raining the day before. Uh, yeah, it was partly, partly uh, crappy, as I say. I don't like to run in the rain, okay. so probably I would say. Doesn't the app have a date on it? Uh, I think the I, app keeps track I, of the day. That was. I don't know. So many anyway, browsers ago, I can't I'm recall say, right now. I'm gonna say the last sunny day. Okay because it rained for a long time, because I don't like to run in the rain. It's messy, muddy, and annoying. And that app was not very helpful. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> was it a free app? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that app wasn't very helpful. We, we call it the app builders. Oh, God. <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, no. Was, uh, I, yeah, I don't like to run in the rain, so I'm going to say the last time I ran was probably the last break in the rain. How often were you running? At what point did you start running again? Was it regular? Um, after my implants healed, okay. after my implants started healing, I started doing like at home yoga and exercises and things like that. And then was slowly progressing into uh, running little bits here and there. Um, sometimes I would run around our yard. Um, like if the kids were napping, I'd pop the monitor in my hip and run around our yard, which I hated. Um, but it was really weather dependent because I'm a wuss and I don't like running in the rain. Keith, do you have some thoughts you want to add in for clarification? Um, so I went through before my daughter put the wrong code in my phone and erased my entire phone uh, yesterday. Uh, <laughs> we had a backup as of like the third. <laughs> you know, <laughs> back to actually, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, but I had all my notes before that. Um, October 18th, uh, she sent me a text saying, Okay. The first time I ran yeah. since my yep. Yep. I just didn't know if there was something. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to say she started out. The other thing is um, you told me a story. You were running and a, a guy whistled at you. And to me, that was either a day or the day before you ran. So I would say you either ran the day before or the prior day. Okay. Because I remember that being fresh in my mind. After yeah, all that this wolf happened. whistled at her at the mailboxes or something Some like that. Some guy whistled yeah. at her. And, it was, and that was the day she went running. And then we had steak. You made a I remember that because he, went, and he whistled and I went, you're not whistling to yeah. me, right? <laughs> and I don't think it was, it obviously wasn't Halloween night that that happened. So that tells me it was either the first or it was in the 30th. So it was within a couple of days that you ran. And that would, in my opinion, was only like the fourth, fifth time you ran. Well, and I talk to Keith every time I run because I complain about it. Me too. So, <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah, every time I ran, I feel like I talked to Keith about it because it would be, what did you do? Like, oh, my, ran went, my run went great. Or, God, my run sucked yeah. today. And it, and my lungs were burning. And it, it the wasn't whole mile thing right. is so much longer than you see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have a couple of things I was writing down that she told me that. Uh, really, can I use the ladies' room? Yes. Yeah. Double check on your brand if you wouldn't mind while you're in there. Your drawers. Oh, yeah. Got it. In style and all that <laughs> stuff. Sorry. Um, Excuse me. You can ask her when she comes back. I just want to know if she started that song when she left the house and so it was playing while she was running past the tree guys. Um, but she did say that she remembers the, the girl, the, the door, the front door was open and her, she said one foot was on the ground, not two. But she didn't, she didn't necessarily say it was on the ground because I was showing her different vehicles if it was like a step. Because I did show her like a Ford Edition, I believe it was, mm -hmm. like a 1999 one. And she was like, oh, that, that kind of looks similar. Mm. Um, so you might want to ask her about her leaning out, pointing. And she said she really noticed a large back window. Like she just remembered it was long in the back. My description of that is basically just a third row 
size SUV versus mm-hmm. a two row is kind of the vehicle she was looking at. And then also she definitely talks about a hump. That's all she talks about is a hump. And she's almost under the impression that there was, she was like laying down in there <laughs> trying to figure out, of course she had something overhead, but two seats in the front and the, the driver and passenger seats. And then she feels there was no other seats in the entire thing except for one, she's, this is where I get confused. Almost like the second row of seats, they took all of that out except for left one. And then the rest was just, I was like, was it metal or carpet? And she said it was carpet. Mm-hmm. All of them. But she said she felt she was on something. Like if she would move, it would move. So it was like a tarp, a blanket, a plastic sheet. And then she said she, she'll show you. She was kind of showing me how she was like tied down to it. Like she couldn't get up. So I was like, why are you waving your arms here? <laughs> she said you know, she couldn't. A lot of those vehicles, that front row always has that one seat that gets to the back mm-hmm. and then has that double bench. So gotcha. maybe, yeah. <clears throat> maybe that's what that is. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally the same package that it's okay. in uh, their Hanes 5S. It doesn't say like the style or okay. anything, but they're sorry. Okay. That's all. Okay, so just hike that. Right. Regular women's underwear. No, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not I'm not getting too in depth, but obviously there's a method to my madness. I understand. That's why I grabbed them and brought oh. them back. Yeah. And she also, and you'll ask, um, I believe she said that you. It was the older lady, the younger lady driving, older lady passenger. So while while you're Correct. gone, he was updating us on some prior uh, thoughts that you had in the last couple of days about some of your uh, memory. So he was just telling us, um, you know, something about uh, that you made an observation or you had a thought the other day uh, that the female was possibly leading out the vehicle, like she was getting out or something to that effect. Does yes, that, you the door that? was open and the body language was that she was getting out of the vehicle. But what I can't remember is <laughs> were her feet on the ground or were they on, what's the thing that cars Step have? Side. Steps. Steps side or running board. Thank you. That's what I can't remember. I can't remember if her feet were actually on the ground or foot um, or was it on... Uh, step thing. Okay. And that you had an observation or a thought that the back window in the vehicle was large? Long. Long? Yes. Okay. Describe, what, what do you mean by that? I mean, it's one of those, duh, Brian. Uh, Describe no, that for me. Uh, not like uh, like a truck bed that's covered, like a SUV. Okay. But some SUVs are like shorter. Right. It was longer. And you're talking about from side to side. Yes. You're talking about the back or if it's not the a, passenger door window. There's another window past window. the passenger door window. So it's a side window. Can we draw it? Yeah, uh, yes, please. I'm a terrible <laughs> artist, so That's please. fine. So is he. So yeah. between the both of you, you guys might get a halfway decent. <laughs> we're, gonna do, we're gonna do a huge, right? It doesn't have to be stick figures. I don't need all that out. I think <laughs> Well, I'm driving like an SUV, those right? Those types of colors and shapes and stuff is really what's going to help them about the and outside. It's, it's hard because I want to I want to say like black or dark blue, but I'm just not 100% sure, so it's hard for me to actually say a color. Absolutely. I just remember dark. Okay. I get it. And that's not, and I, because it's not, <laughs> that's not something I paid attention to. Like, Ish. it wasn't something I... No, right, right. <laughs> even thought that I should be paying attention to it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely not to scale. Not a scale. <laughs> and of course, you're on the wrong side because that's the driver's okay, side. Okay, so there's, there's a window. Here's the window. And then there's like a longer window. Okay. Gotcha. Behind this window. Okay. So it's what we call a C window? So, Car crashes and mm-hmm. call it. And so, okay. for clarification, the vehicle is heading northbound uh, on the Oregon Trail when you first when you first saw it. Uh, you, coming. Okay, I, I I'm sorry. I'm mad with direction too. So if I'm so, so not helpful. We're, we're sorry, yeah. So you're running down Sunrise towards Old Oregon Trail. Correct. Did the vehicle? So if you if your face if if you and I are looking out Sunrise to Old Oregon Trail. Was the vehicle going this way? Yep, okay. and then backed up. 
and then it backed up. So right now I'm pointing that's northbound and it backed up a little bit, then that's when you encounter Northbound's it. the side that's closest to Sunrise Drive, correct? Correct. Yes, Chevron. then that's it. <laughs> that's the one. We're going to Chevron. Yeah, they were going to the Chevron. Side. They were heading towards Chevron. Perfect. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah. I don't like you. <laughs> and Pete's like, was it a Ford? Was it? I'm like, I don't know brands. We're going to Chevron. <laughs> it had wheels on it, okay? <laughs> so, do you... I'll ask a couple questions. It's okay. It's okay. Do you recall if you went up towards Chevron, or did do you notice if they turned around and went back the other way that they came? I don't remember. Okay. That's what I what is very frustrating. Yes, and that to would me. be very frustrating. Um, I get that. That's it's the what little I'm, thing. Yeah. No, I'm very frustrated because if you're laying down in a vehicle, you would feel a U-turn. A acceleration, mm -hmm. a braking, and I just can't, I can't find that. It's just not there yet. It's so let me, mechanism. I'll put it in perspective. So I had an incident not too long ago, and when I talked about something, I said the vehicle was facing this way. And this is where I was, and this is what I did, and this is da da. And I went down this whole list. And then they showed me a photograph of the vehicle that I was describing. It was facing the other way. But at the time of the incident, at the time where I was, and what was going on, it imprinted in my mind no, that fucking car was facing that way. When they showed me a picture, and then they showed me video of it, that car was facing, and I felt stupid. I felt they're not going to believe me now. That's how I felt. I'm thinking, I, I just lied. But at that time, at that moment, given the circumstances I was in, you, I, I, I thought well, they had to move it. You guys moved the car. No, Brian, this is 10 minutes after the fact. And it, it screwed me for about two days. Because I'm thinking, my God, I just told everybody my version of events, and I was wrong about it. A key piece because I said no. I was right here in front of the truck and da 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 da, and, that, and this is all what happened. Come to find out, it was the truck had turned around. Yeah, it's, it's just because our minds and, and it frustrates it frustrates me to this day that from where I come from and where my background, it's like how did I screw that up? I didn't screw it up. This did. This this part of me says for whatever reason we're looking this way. So when I say I understand your frustration and I get that. I get it. I'm sharing it with you. And I don't know if I've ever shared that. I don't think I've shared it with Kyle. But I, I get it. That's frustrating shit. Because you you know it's there. You you may believe or see or smelt or felt. And your mind's saying something else. So I get that. And it's frustrating as shit. Mm -hmm. So. Those brain games? Uh-huh. Sure are those brain games. <laughs> so. It's the same thing. Keith was talking about that you had some observations about the back of the vehicle being slippery and that maybe there was or no, wasn't some um, seats? What, no, explain it's, that. Um, uh, the position I was in was very awkward and that's why my hips were achy. Okay. Um, because laying on my side for a long period of time, um, it makes it achy after okay. I've had two kids. Um, it's that it's it's that fatigue because we've mm -hmm. taken long car rides before, um, you know. It's that long, it's that sitting, that achy feeling. But there was because um, I could see light, I could see light, I could see shadows. As in, we were driving past like a tree, you know, when a tree, mm -hmm. even if you have your eyes shut, you drive past a tree and you see the mm -hmm. light. I could see that. I could smell. Um, the laundry detergent. I, if I smelled it, I could probably even tell you the smell of the laundry detergent still. Uh, that will be a future trigger. Okay, yeah. Uh, and there was, I know I was attached to a bar or some piece of metal because it was cold. <clears throat> I was on, and there was something underneath me but where my knee was, was on carpet because it was itchy. And there was a hump. 
I was facing, I could hear them. I could hear them in the front seat and my back was to them and I was facing the rear. The hump is, I could feel the edge of it. I could lift my head a little bit and it's, it's, this is hard to describe. So if, if this is close in front of me, I can feel that. I can feel that that's close. Mm -hmm. So if I lift my head, I can, I know that there's, there's nothing here. Mm -hmm. My head's down. There's something here. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense to you? Mm -hmm. Um, so I feel like there was a lip or a, yes, like a level up. Yes. In front of me, there wasn't a lot of space between where I was, but there was a, and that's what it, I could tell where my knee was, and I could tell when I would lift my head a little ways. But I was very scrunched up. Could you feel what your back was up against? Mm, no. I don't think my back was up against anything. Okay. Was your chest up against anything? No. So you, so you were confined, so you weren't like right behind the front passenger window, so like where your back would be against the driver and passenger seat and your chest would be at like that will well, like where our feet go. You think you're beyond that? No, back. I was on like a carpeted, it was like the carpeted area, but I feel like it would have been where a seat should be, okay. like an area where a seat should be. But not directly behind the driver and the passenger? No. There was space between, in between. But I, okay, this is better. It's, this is difficult to explain because, okay. Right. So here's- so um, people are drawings on one page, hang on. I'm wondering if it's like an elevated rear, if it's a three seat vehicle, has a little elevation. For the so rear seat here's- Platform. Here's where the front seats are, okay. Front seats are here. Um, I think there was a seat here. I can't be certain, but I think there was a seat here. And it's just Pat, uh, driver? Driver, okay. yes. There's this seat. We'll say that's the steering wheel. Okay. Uh, there was like stuff, like bars, like uh, not bars, metal pieces. Like there should be a seat here, I feel like. I was here, so there was space. And there's a hump here. This is that hump. And where, what's I I can't Sorry, remember if there was a seat there or not. But I, like here, I could, I could feel it on my skin. Like I could feel the pressure of there being like some kind of metal. And yeah, that's the old, like my, grew up, my grandparents had older, older, big SUV. Um, and those were all metal, like where it latches. So like my, my Jeep, all that ratches down into a metal piece, like when it folds up and down. So maybe it's one of those. Um, yeah, which side is your head on of the vehicle, if you remember? This side. Okay. So as you were going, um, I think it's my face. Front face, smiley face? It's mine. Smiley face. Um, as you're driving and the light's hitting, the sun's coming through, is that on your face? or on your, um, like on your back, like your um, legs area. What, if you remember, what side is the sun on? I have no idea. That's going on. Uh, I don't know, because I don't really think I saw, like, like as in one side was brighter than the other. I think I just saw Shadows. I, I have no idea. Um, for shadows, be there's got to be blocking the sun. So is that like the same? So do you, would you remember like if your, is, is your left ear down or is your right ear down? Right My right. Okay. Um, and your face was covered, obviously. Do you remember what, um, like what side the shadows are on? Mm -hmm. If they're towards like maybe like the top of your head as opposed to your chin, if you're looking down or up. 
Mm-hmm. That's okay. We're not worried about it. That's not, it's not a negative. It is. Um, it's frustrating for me to not have answers for you guys, too. I'm trying, but. And these are the little things we're trying to help bring them up if they're there. And this, like a lot of our questions, might come to you at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. If that happens, write them down, call me. Call okay. me at that time. I don't care. Okay. Um, And when you said it was hard to move your head, was it hard because there was an object on it, or? Um, I didn't like, feel well. Okay. Like I didn't. I felt like a nauseous, dizzy, yucky. I don't know. Yeah. How? Good. And what do you think the time frame from on that road was? It primarily you said it was curvy or kind of getting like. I'm assuming kind of a car sick nausea besides the stress. Yes. Um, was that for long times or was it curvy for times, long straights for times, if you remember? I feel like the times I was awake, it was curvier than straight. There was more curves than straight. I don't remember any stops. That's what I'm trying to remember. Was there a stop? Did I turn? Or was it just the curves? Or was there a stop and a turn? Right or left? It was turn. It was curves, like a windy road, not a stop and a turn. Um, would they have to break on the turns, or did it seem pretty smooth? Some of them, I don't want to say all of them, some of them it seemed like there was break and acceleration, but not all of them. Um, how many times do you think you fell asleep like on that first? Okay. Um, when you got to the the first stop that you remember, was it still what was was it still bright outside? Was it? I don't remember. I don't even remember getting out of the vehicle. The next thing I remember is I was in a room. Let's pause there. You have stuff on. The last time that I remember waking up, it was still light. It was still bright, like it didn't seem like it was dark. The last time I woke up in the car, um, it was bright. But, okay, well, I'm trying to think like were my muscles sore, was my ear sore? Because when I lay on my ear for a long time, it hurts. And I could wake up and I just, I can't remember any of that. How long does it take for you to get achy hips when you lay on your side? Does that question make sense? Yes. Uh, trying to think of the last show that I watched <laughs> during the show, at what point of the show or the movie. Because I'm a roller. Say... My wife refers it to my alligator roll. When my hips start hurting, uh-huh. I do basically like an alligator roll. Mm-hmm. And I do a complete somersault in bed flip to my other hip because I get my yeah. hips. I have a hip issue. And so when I lay on my right side. Labor. No, I know I have well, I mean, yeah. what, are you, what are you saying? <laughs> no, for me, I have hip issues from labor. Um, um, when I lay on my right side for about 30 minutes, um, it starts, it aches and annoys and I have to, I have to adjust. Yeah, I want to so. say let's, let's look like a good like 40, I okay. want to say like it's like one show of blacklist gotcha. and then I have to move. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's probably one TV show. So I'm going to say like 40 minutes, less than a, a little less than an hour. Unless I'm on my bed and it's nice and fluffy and comfortable. Right. And pillows, but, pillows between the knees. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember any music? 
as you were driving by. Yes, mariachi music. It's incredibly safe to say that Sherry is racist, specifically towards Hispanic people. We don't know why, this is just something we generally have to deal with. Her feeling the need to villainize Hispanic people in fictitious acts of aggression against her, mixed with her annoyance of anything that is culturally relevant to them, is strange. Um, was, there, was it a station or a... Uh, like as in a radio station? Yeah. I yeah. want to say it was probably a radio station. I'm, I can't be sh sure, but did I hear any Pandora... Uh, yeah. commercials, no. Um, Did you hear any normal commercials? So like, um, if we're listening to a radio... No, I didn't hear commercials. I didn't, I didn't really hear, and I, I don't think I ever heard a complete song from start to finish either. Um, I listened for that a lot in the house too. Like, was this a, was this a radio? Was it... Or was it Pandora or, um, since, since we've touched it twice, you mentioned the house twice or location where you remember, can we talk about that? Let's start with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tell us. What would you like? The description of the room? Would you like sure. the sounds that I heard? Would you like what I think was there? What would yes. you like? What was the first thing you remember? Uh, the first thing I remember uh, was the, the zip ties on my hands. And then the clothing that was very big. It was baggy clothing. It was sweatpants and a sweatshirt and I did not have socks and I was very cold and there was zip ties on my hands and I didn't feel good. I couldn't stand up. I was very dizzy. When you first had this and the sweatshirt stuff, is that the same stuff that you were found in the other day? No. How so? Um, because they would change me. Okay. Um, because the there was a, a drawstring on the sweatpants. There was a drawstring on the sweatpants, and the other one didn't have a drawstring. How many times do you think you were changed or had changed of clothes? Obviously, at least twice. So it's yeah, I think maybe one more time. <clears throat> Did it seem like the clothes were new? The, or old? wait a minute. Okay. The sweatshirt, the top, the top was changed more because I was trying to, I was trying to manipulate her. My skin was really, my skin was like on fire. It was really itchy everywhere. And I, I started this rash mm -hmm. um, that's up in here. Mm -hmm. This It was starting to like swell, mm -hmm. starting to swell so bad that it was like putting pressure on my arm. So I was trying to um, manipulate them. I need some kind of medicine. Like, look at my skin. You need to wash me. You need to give me medicine. You need to get me something. Um, and I was using that and it was so... Um, so they would argue about washing my clothes and I was able to take two, I want to say two showers. Um, they weren't really to call them a shower. It was get in, rinse water down your back and get out. Um, but she let me wash my underpants in the shower. Were you able to see at that time or were you, were you still had a bag? Of no, I could see. Okay. And that was when I was trying, you know, it was always look down, um, don't look at us, look down. Um, I was never allowed to look up. Um, the first day, the first day with the zip ties, getting out of them, because they were behind, they were behind my back. So I pulled them, I did one of these moves. And that's what this scar right there is from, is the very beginning when I got them off and okay. I bit them because I couldn't, because 
Keith and I have even tried this move before, the whole, you know, like power through it and bust it. Mm -hmm. And I tried that and was unsuccessful. <laughs> and, and it cut right here. And I was like, I remember doing this with Keith. How the F do I get these off? This is the second time in this interview that Sherry has talked about being prepared for something like this to happen. She had tried to bust through zip ties previously with Keith and was able to do it. But when it counted, she couldn't. This isn't abnormal for people who listen and watch true crime related media, but it's interesting knowing that this entire scenario is fake. She wasn't preparing in case something happened to her. She was preparing for when she faked this scenario. Although obviously she hadn't prepared enough. It's also interesting that in her own kidnapping fan fiction, she has to imply that she was manipulating the women who held her captive. She was outsmarting them by saying she needed medicine for a rash and trying to get them to help her out. However, what she doesn't realize is that the kidnapping scenario she is illustrating doesn't make sense. Usually kidnappings have a sort of end goal in mind. Parents kidnapping children in order to keep their child, predators kidnapping their victims to prey on them, or predators kidnapping women in order to traffic them. However, this scenario, as Sherry explains it, makes no sense, because it seems like two women kidnapping another woman for no reason. If they planned on selling her or prostituting her, they wouldn't have chopped off her hair and branded her, as that would make her less attractive to potential buyers, but they never laid a hand on her sexually. And I tried that several times, and I tried the power, bust it down, and that, that's where it cut in right there, and then I was like, I can't bust through them, so then I just chewed it off, and I cut my lip right here, and then I busted them. Um, and then it was like, I tried the door. I could tell that the door had a deadbolt at the top, so I couldn't open the door. And then they came in, and that's all I remember from that experience. Um, no, there's something else. No, there's something else before I tried the door. There was something else before I tried the door. The windows? Oh, there's something else there. There's something else after the zip ties that happened. After I broke the zip ties. I'm trying to think if it maybe there was something around my feet or something, but there's something else. We can come back to it. Um, there was... Okay, there was boards on the windows. There was boards on the windows, and I yanked that fucker out of the wall super quick, and that's what got her in the room was that noise. I was standing on the bed to get to the window. I was standing on the bed to get to the window, the yanking it out was what made the noise, not the zip ties, not anything. It was the yanking the board, the first board. There was two boards. It didn't go all the way across the window. It was, it was window, board. I'm doing a terrible drawing, board. There was no space in between, sorry. But window, board, board, um, bed. This one broke my nail, ripped it off. She came in and then it was lights out. What do you mean it was lights out? I, I can't remember if it was, if I was hit with something, if I was stuck with something, if it, and that's what I was asking too. If I was tased, wouldn't I remember? Or would there be a scar? Would there be a mark? Would there be a mark? Uh, it just depends if the probes made skin contact. Or if it was a handheld, there'd be... But it wouldn't register you like cognitive Here. help. It's, it's skeletal muscles. So it's, it's only muscle, so it wouldn't be like... like you see on TV all the time, they get tased and they just lay on the ground. Yeah. Uh, but tasers only affect muscles. So have you ever touched a horse fence? A horse wire? I don't think so. Hot wire? I don't think so. It's, it's a unique experience. <laughs> okay. Um, but you ever, you ever been shocked before, in general? I don't think so. Okay. So, like, when the taser comes through, like, if, if I get a taser here and here and here, it'll only affect my muscle. The electricity goes from this probe to this probe, and it attaches all the muscles to this little, it's water. 
Um, so the muscle will tighten up and that's where that clack, clack, clack. So it's only that quad. Okay. If I put it from here to here, you'll do both quads and my abdomen as the electricity goes from this leg up and around to that leg. So chances are it probably wouldn't have knocked me out. No, not cognitively. Right. Unless it was a, if it was like a handheld, like a drive stun, it would just it would shock you and make you like, out. It wouldn't but my eyes would still be open. But, yeah. But your brain could also just say, I don't want to remember. You still have that element to it. So <clears throat> describe the flooring to me. Carpet. Color. Thickness. Um, different than this carpet. It wasn't like 1970s shag carpet, was it? No, <laughs> it was like a cheap, I don't want to, I, it's, I don't know if it was like brown, maybe orange. Like an orangey brownish, but it was like cheap. It wasn't, it was like cheapy. Was it, uh, was it like uh, It was secured? a different, it was a different carpet in the closet also. It, the carpet in the closet texture was different than the outside room carpet. Like it, like they replaced the carpet and then just didn't replace the mm. closet carpet. Every time she describes the home that these two fictional Hispanic women took her to, she is describing James Ray's apartment. So all the disdain and hostility she is showcasing towards her surroundings is real, but she is expressing it about a man who had thought she was in danger and drove hundreds of miles to save her. What the bathroom? What's that look like? <laughs> I tried to hit her with something in the bathroom, and then the next time I went in the bathroom, everything was gone. The mirror was gone, the towel rack was gone, everything was gone. But it just was a standard, oh, there was a crack in the tile. It was a light colored tile that was speckled. There was a crack in the tile. It was always hands on the wall. It was a really high pressured shower with just your standard cheapy shower head. I was never allowed to touch the nozzle or and it, in the beginning, that very first shower that I had hurt really bad because the burn was fresh and the water was running over it and there was other open wounds and it just... Oh, and she doused me. I wanna say it was like rubbing alcohol maybe because it was that smell and that burning. I don't think it was peroxide. I think it was rubbing alcohol, but it was like a <laughs> Doused. Can you, could you uh, discern or was it like a trailer, bathroom, manufactured? That's you know okay. I mean? So that's where I feel like my parent. My parents have a, uh, a. I think it's called a prefabricated house in Shingle Town. Okay. And I feel like that's what it sounded like, and there was um, wood paneling. Like I could have busted right through the wood paneling. It was very thin, and the walls were thin. Um, if I ha like, if I hadn't have been on the cable and the chain, I could have just busted right through the wall. You and mean? you could hear, like if you put your head to the wall, because I did that often, you could hear very easily. And the insulation, it was freezing all the time. It was cold all the time. And there was a fireplace. I could smell the fireplace and I could hear that creaky, when you move the handle to open the fireplace, it, it was that creaky, it sounded exactly like the fireplace it's I like had. It's like Burning. Yeah, it sounded exact, like literally exactly like the wood-burning stove I had as a kid in our old Main Street house in Chasa Lake City. Um, I could even smell when she put different kind of wood in the fireplace. Any particular wood smells you recall? I couldn't tell you the kind of wood. I could just, just tell you. I could notice smells? a difference. Yes, I could notice a difference. What's... What's the comment about when you were on the cable? What do you mean? 
a minute ago you said when I was on the cable, were you tethered to a cable? Uh, there was a chain around my waist. Okay. Um, so the chain had... I'm sure. Okay, sorry. The <laughs> chain... Okay. The yeah, chain... So, here's a, a, a pretty stick figure. <laughs> Let's draw the whole room. You want to do that? Sure. We'll lay up the whole room. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think where to start with the direction. So, here's the door. Mm -hmm. Here's the closet. The closet had two doors. Here's the, the hinge here. Here's the hinge here. They shut inward. Here's the doorknob here. There was like some kind of holders because they would lock it with some kind of thing to keep it shut. Uh, when I was, when they were, I think, I want to say when they were maybe uh, changing the bedding or changing, but more often than not, or if they, or if they maybe had to go outside to get something, I was in here because I could sometimes hear a door. They would put me in here. And then there was, I, I'm bad with dimensions. So let's just say here's the closet and here's, we're going up this direction. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Towards the ceiling. There was a shelf. And, okay, so I could, the shelf was maybe, I could touch it, I had this much leverage, so I could touch it, so it was probably, the shelf was maybe this tall. Because I could grab it, but I couldn't push it up. If I could push it up, if I was tall enough to push it out up, I would have been able to get out but I wasn't tall enough to push it all the way up. So the shelf, I could grab like the ledge, you know, if I was on my tip, tip, tip toes, I could grip the ledge. And then there was this pull, stupid pull that was attached here, came down like all the way up. Fucking pull is the only reason why I was there. The cable was here and it made a turn. I'm sorry for swaying. And then the cable, I could reach all the way to the bed, couldn't reach the door, couldn't reach the window, could reach the bed. There was a, um, a at all times, there was a bucket in the um, closet. That's what I used to go to the bathroom in. Um, was the room rectangle or square? Ish. I want to say rectangle. I, like the walls weren't, like some walls were smaller than others. I would say rectangle. Okay. So where? Um, Door. You know, if Closet. Swung, which did it swing towards the rest of the room or towards the this other wall? This direction. Okay. Windows. Two or one? You mean, was there more than just this one? This was the only window. Was it big or small? I don't know. I don't know what's big and what's small as in terms of windows, sorry. Um, in, for the room, did it look like it was, was it the whole length of the room? Oh, no. Um, so where, sorry. where's the window you tried to break out of? So this is boarded. Correct. Um, I was so close. Where, um, where's the bed in relation to the door? Um, you want to draw? Which way does it go? Um, it was a smaller mattress. Okay. I'm gonna say maybe like a twin or maybe. I think, I think, I would say a twin. It was small. Okay. Where's the closet in relation to the bed? Okay. And you said the doors went this way? They opened.
opened out? Yes. Okay. Um, we'll hand over this side. Yes. Where? It latched onto something. Like, not only did they shut, but there was like a, like, when you shut it, it would make a noise. Like a standard or something like, something that they put in? So like, if you have like an old, if we went to like an older house and we shut the, um, sometimes there's a little knob that comes inside it and it like holds onto it, so it just doesn't open all the way? Um, come to the door with me. It wasn't like... Like this? Is this what you're talking about? No, um, some of them pop into each other, so there's two, they're on um, springs. No, it popped into something that was on that shelf. Okay. Does that make more sense? Yes. Sorry. So it comes up and it would hit it, and then it would hold it. So then to open it, you'd have to release a piece-ish. Correct. Correct. Okay. So from here, what was right on the inside of this door? Nothing. Okay. Uh, was there... Light switch. Sorry, light switch. Was there any, like, here's the bed, was there any type of, like, dresser or anything, any type of normal bedroom furniture in this room? There was a dresser, but after I ripped this up when I woke up, it was no longer there. Where was the dresser the first day you were there? Here. Was it a tall, like, a man's dresser, or like a short, long, uh, like a woman's dresser? Two dark colored two drawers. Okay, so like more like nightstands. Yeah, more okay. like that, I would say. One, not two, just okay. one. Drawers. Nothing in it. It's the first thing I did was open the drawers. <laughs> um, was the mattress directly on the floor? Yes. Okay. Um, do you remember anything in this? Oh, area. No. Uh, anything in this area? Is mom here? Yeah. <clears throat> um, anything in this corner that you remember? No. So oh, uh, no. Sometimes the trash can was there every once in a while, but no, no, no. I, wanna, so was, I was going to say the trash can was in that corner, but it was this corner, not that corner. Was that trash can for you, or what was the trash can for Yes. Okay. And at one point, too, I tried, a, uh, I was trying, because they were always mad about it, and I tried to say, you know, if you line it with a bag and put kitty litter in it, it will probably make your job a little easier trying to... I, because I tried everything with them. I tried any tactic that I could, and they did that. They they put kitty litter in it afterwards. So was this? It's very important to Sherry that she be seen as smarter than the two people holding her captive. She wants to make it clear that even though she was kidnapped and held against her will for no particular reason, she was smarter than everyone involved. Trash can for you to go to the bathroom in. Yes. Okay. So this wasn't like a normal like. Trash can, this was like for your... No, it was small, it was like a small plastic, like it was just your ordinary small plastic waste basket. Like it was, it, like it was like a bathroom waste basket. Okay. And it was round, it wasn't square, it was round and it was small. And it was really hard to squat on because it wasn't very tall. Okay. Um, so when you're describing, you're describing this, <laughs> so this cable, was the cable affixed to the wall and like the cable was loose? The cable was affixed to a pole that went up into the ceiling. Okay. And that's Bless you. about middle of the... Dead center. Dead center. So we have this pole that was anchored to the roof somewhere. Correct. What was on the pole? Uh, the shelves that I couldn't get out. They were like super bolted in. Like... Like they'd added more stuff to it okay. to not to not get them because I the first day when I broke my fingernails it was trying to get the screws like trying to undo the screws and that there. was like on these sides and yes and trying to get to where the drywall was because there was drywall but um, but I couldn't and trying to move that pole but I couldn't move the pole the pole too it wasn't just like a a pole it was like it. Um, 
almost, it's not quite rebar. It, it was, okay, so think of if you had a screw that was big and long and you tried to grab it, it would like cut your fingers almost. Um, is that making any sense? Mm -hmm. Like, like a lag it, bolt? I don't know what that is. So it's a big screw. <laughs> yeah, you, just, you described <laughs> yeah. a lag bolt. It's a large wood screw that kind of similar to like rebar, but it's for... Yeah, it, it have, wasn't very thick. No. It wasn't like I could grab it with both hands. It wasn't thick enough that I had to do this. Right. It was. But you put it in your hands. Yes, like, but I couldn't grab it. Like that's that. Those were some of the hand? first injuries that I had. Was trying to rip the stupid thing out, and I made my hands hurt a lot. That there was just it was it wouldn't give. It wouldn't give at all. So like thickness of the pin, a little thicker, a little less. Thicker. thicker. By a lot or a little like so. Are we getting more to like? Like the thickness of the um, um, so in between. Yeah, if you could give me something that I could grab, it would be easier for me. But are you able to put your hands all the way around the straws? <laughs> like thumb? Yep, thumb, yes. thumb to finger. Okay. Yes. There's a big thing of straw right there. You want to try to grab? Nah, it's she, she can she go finger fingertip to tip, thumb yes. tip to fingertip. So it's okay. three quarter yes. inch yep. wide. There you go. Pistols. <laughs> Um, yeah, Some, somewhere around there. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. Yes. So if we're... <coughs> yeah. Got to say <laughs> Go ahead, Keith. Do you know that game that you had me make? Or did Tyler smash it that thing and it you know, flips the deal up for... Pumpkin slipper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember that big piece of bar that I had? It was a screw and I had the bolts that screwed into it. That it was mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. something like that. It's got the big grooves in it, it would hurt. Mm -hmm. And was it screwed up? Did it look like it was screwed up into the wall? I don't know. Did it look like they, I don't know. I was saying, so it wasn't a smooth surface. Yeah. Because, I mean, that would be easy for us to buy a piece, bolt that in, and this thing would screw up into it. It was not smooth. Yeah. I, I have it was a piece, like grabbing here, a big, a piece it was like grabbing a big screw, okay. is what it felt like. That makes sense. So now I have. So now we're looking directly into the closet, and there was nothing in the closet, right? Other than the bucket. Bucket. Which side of the? It, I moved it around. So. Okay. We'll just put that here. Yeah. It was never. It never seemed like it was set in the same place. So if this was the um, the thing that went into the so the the pipe or the whatever we're what are we going to call. I don't know the bar. The bar. The bar. Where. Bars in the middle, where is it in relation to the, um, the shelf? In the center of the shelf. Does it go below the shelf or above the shelf? Below the shelf. How far? Uh, I hit my head on it a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe that far. So a foot down from here? Yeah. Okay. I apologize. Was, I'm really bad at like okay. foot, inch, five yeah. miles, two yard. I'm really bad at I'm that. An, I'm so. an ish guy. I like ish. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're about an ish down from here, about a foot. <laughs> so from here, is there anything that goes um, on the base of this or is it just hanging there? Yes. What there was washers and uh, what are those bolts, okay. which I got out. Okay. Which I got off. So this whole thing goes up into the roof. Correct. Okay. So the ceiling. Thing. Correct. Off to another one. Does it go through the shelf? Yes. Okay. So if this is the shelf. That's if I could have right. gotten the shelf off, I could have gotten out because I could have pulled the cable just straight off of it. It was the shelf that I couldn't get off. So that's why I was... And I couldn't break through sense. the shelf either. I couldn't break through the shelf and I couldn't get the shelf off because that was in the middle of the shelf. If I could have just... So, see the hole? Mm -hmm. yep. Here's the shelf. If I could have just removed the shelf, then I could have just went, see you later. So with... What was... Do you know what like, what you were affixed to? Was it like a tether? Was it like a rope? A metal cable. Um, about how thick, do you know? It was thin. It was, and the end, I was working on the end and I got the end frayed. So it was not very thick, but I mean, I, 
I even tried chewing on it at one point. I popped a screw out of the electrical socket and tried scraping with a screw at one point. I mean, there was... Have you ever hung a picture, like a picture wire, like something like that? Uh, thicker. Okay. Pay attention. Um, I was going to say, it's probably like Buddy's dog leash thing. You know, we used to have that metal wire. Yes. Yeah. How thick was that? Eighth inch, quarter inch? Three eighths? Probably eighth inch. Ish. Uh, Ish. Uh, so did this, sorry, did this tether go? Yes. Similar. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. That is that? So did the pipe, so this pipe just went straight up and it ended at the yeah. bottom? Yes. How was, um, so the cable that you were attached to, that was loose. So if you, like, if you, mm. like, if you had, like, if it, let's say, um, I had pipe. slack. Slack. Yes. 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 Okay. I could get to, I could, okay. So I could get to the bed. So it reached the bed. Okay. I could obviously get to the closet. Yep. And I could touch the light with my toe. I could stretch my toe up with the light, which never went on, unfortunately. But, and Keith and I were talking about that as well. But it went on when they turned it on. So that leads me to believe that they had to have flipped a breaker or something that it would work for switch. them, but it wouldn't work for me. I'm sorry, what did you say? I didn't hear you. Could be on a three-way switch. Oh, yeah, you know, I don't like know in the what hallway. that means. Sorry. Basically, you, so like if you have this switch here, and you have a switch over in that wall, you can link them, so if you turn it on, it turns it off, turns it on, turns it off, oh, so you have access, yeah. so. It never worked for me. So yeah. you could have had access to the outside. So I really love it. Okay. Um, so this accurately depicts the bedroom-ish? Yes. Um, you said there was no light that came in through the board? There was the most minuscule, tiny sliver of light, but I mean, not even that it would cast light onto the floor. I don't, I feel like I was on a side where the sun wasn't, because I feel like if the sun would have been on that crack, then there would be, you know, light coming through. I don't feel like that ever happened. Like no. I never saw light directly coming through. I could see like, you know, it was getting lighter, it was getting darker shades, but I never actually never any direct saw. light coming through? Thank you, yes, so no. So more like a north facing window? I have no idea. Like on that, I don't know what's on this side of this house, but you know, the, the window facing. Like as in it to, wasn't facing the sun. Not facing east west. It was. If it was facing south at this time of year, you're going to get direct light. And if it's facing I think so. towards the sunrise, you're going to get some light. And if it's facing towards the sunset, you're going to get light. So if it's a north facing window, it's Then you wouldn't be, get direct light it's either. It's going to be yeah. ambient light. That's what I feel like. <clears throat> yes. Um, are you okay? Yes. Do you remember when, when were you first attached to, when you first remember? What do you mean? Like how many hours, days, so that? Was that yeah. something immediate that, that occurred? Or no, that, that didn't happen until I tried to get out. Pretending that any part of her narrative makes sense, why would two women who were skilled at kidnapping someone without being caught then decide to just leave that woman alone in a room without making sure they had no ability to get out? Sherry's basic narrative doesn't make sense. Either these two women kidnapped her to traffic her and sell her to another party, but had never done it before and got lucky, hence no one seeing them. Or these two were skilled abductors who made a lot of stupid mistakes like branding her, cutting off her hair, and just leaving her in a room without making sure she couldn't escape. Like, I don't know, like, why, you think I'm just going to sit there? I mean, <laughs> that didn't make any sense to me. Like, all I had was zip ties, really? And you think I'm not going to get out of a bolted door and a boarded window? Um, so, obviously, so the restraints progressed over time, correct? Yes. So the very first time you, you alluded to earlier, you didn't really say it, it looked like you had the zip ties were around both wrists. Correct. So one zip tie around both wrists or was it one. this? Okay, so one one zip tie, that was your very first restraint. Correct. Um, I hadn't had that, that chain was not on me yet. 
Was that bar there? Was the bar there? When was this already was this already in the room that you remember? I don't know. I don't think the closet doors were even open. Did I open the closet doors? I don't remember I don't remember seeing it. I mean I I'm sure it was there. It didn't it didn't seem like it was freshly put in. Okay. Um but I the day that I tried to break out of the window, I mean, I, that wasn't something that I was really focused on, so I couldn't say. I don't know. Did you give it? How much time do you think you gave it from the very first time you remember being in the room to your very first escape attempt? I feel like, I feel like they, I don't think they expected me to wake up so quickly. Because when when I was breaking through the zip ties, when I first woke up, I could hear, I could hear them like doing things. I could hear like movement. I could hear, I couldn't hear talking, but I could hear like movement. I could hear things. I could hear, um, yeah. So I feel like, I feel like, cause it was very hard to stand up and it was very hard to move around. Um, I felt like heavy almost like, I don't know how to describe that. Like almost like it was hard to stand up. It's hard to describe that feeling. So once you gained your strength, did you try to your escape at that point or did you? What do you mean? So you when, said you I, felt I, heavy. when I had the zip ties on me? Yeah. Or were you, I you never, feel that I head? never felt like I had strength. I was just trying to push through it. I was very fumbly trying to get the window out. I was very fumbly, but. Um, but you tried, you remember coming to, it's not like you gave it hours or minutes or did you get it? Hmm? Yes. Sorry. No problem. Um, because you came back and tightened it. There's a padlock onto the cable. And I remember you drew me like a loop. Yeah, I can do that for you. If you would like to wait till the camera is rolling, that's yeah. fine. I can start drawing it for you now. And then you also said you pushed that screw that you took out of that outlet, so there's going to be an outlet with a screw missing because you said you yep. pushed it into something like drywall and it got stuck or something. Yeah. You pushed it somewhere. Yeah. I was trying to like use it like a little. I was like, what would my husband do? My head would my husband would use any tool he could possibly yeah, find. I yeah. Uh, can I use the ladies' room since yes, you're you messing can. with the camera? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we all heard it shut off. We all heard it shut off. Yeah. So I have to ask how many cats are here? There's uh, two in here, and then uh, some neighborhood ones that just kind of walk oh. around out there. Are you allergic? No, I don't like cats. Oh. I just saw like, maybe four different ones. Oh, there's, there's only so yeah. many three total, but I've seen some other ones come on here. Sometimes it'll be like a skunk or something, <laughs> usually at night out there. Beautiful property. Yeah. See the pool toys. You guys get in the river? Is there a pool somewhere? There's a big old pool right there, and then my kids go in the spa thing out there. You know what I'm Yeah, I'm just, uh, she hasn't been eating a lot. So I'm just, I'm just thinking about her. She well, if we need to take a break, so she can get back. Ah, oh, it's so awesome to say, what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so at some point, what we were just talking offline about. Um, at some point, you were able to take out the screw to the light switch? Yes. Can you... Not light switch, uh, outlet. So you're able to take the screw out? Yep. Where did you put the screw? What area did you shove it into? I had the screw for a long time. I tried to, I tried to pick the lock on the lock on the, on the chain. I tried to use it as a saw <laughs> um, up in this area. So right, because I was trying to like unscrew things because everything had like bolts and screws and everything. And I, um, um, yeah, I want to say somewhere near the closet where the drywall was. Because I could poke through the drywall, but what's the point of poking, busting, because I can punch through drywall. But what's the point of busting through drywall if you can't get a cable off of you? So it was... Boop, there's the screws in the wall now. I 
could punch through the wall to get the screw back, but then it's going to get colder. So what's the point? Mm -hmm. So it was, I was trying to, like, you know, like, move things around, and then I did this, <clears throat> and it went, went through, and it went, Um, yes, so it's somewhere in the wall in here, in this area. High or low? Um, near where the, uh, uh, okay, so we had, um, the, uh, here where the, uh, where they were reinforced. And that, that was difficult, too, because it was like, okay, well, oh, I, the cable can reach the wall, I can bust through the wall, I can bust through the door, I can bust all this stuff, but if I can't get this off of my waist, what, it's not going to matter. So we're thinking, like, right here for the screw ish below this? Yes. So in here somewhere? No, up, 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 up. Okay, so here's, like, up here. Up where, like, the... The shelving had like extra attachments and stuff. So this is the shelf. The right bottom. Here. Okay. So if this is the bottom of the shelf with the attachments that were reinforcing it, okay. it would be like there in the wall area. Can we go back to the shower? Sure. Um, the very first time you showered, do you remember what type of um, like shampoos? Did and you get stuff your like camera that? figured out, or are we just no, kind just of? Do I. I'm sorry. What kind of shampoos and stuff was? There was never shampoo. It was just like. Um, was there a shower curtain? No. Um, there was a bar where a shower curtain should be. Okay. So like the normal standard like, should be hanging, but it just wasn't there. Yes, but it okay. So it was like the like the very inexpensive ones that have like the knob where you can twist it, and it's just small and cylindrical, and you can twist it, and the water comes out. Harder or slower. Mm -hmm. Oh, the old school ones. Yeah. Something like that. It was a bottle. So there was a... She would throw the bottle at me. There was a bottle that I could squeeze like... Uh, body wash. Thank you. Sorry, I don't know why I could... And that was all I got. Was that. Okay. Um. It was really short. Like, I barely would wash the soap away. Is there any... Um... Any other details about the house or the room? Um, That's the us? only part of the house that I saw was the bedroom and the bathroom. Okay. Um, all right. Um, maybe we'll start getting into some of the little harder stuff again. Are you all right with that? Yes. Um, so we learned the very first day we talked to you that the the very first time you attempted to escape was probably one of the worst based on everything you've told us so far. Um, can you tell us how or what happened then? Uh, in terms of what they did or what they, what do you mean? What happened to you the, um, the first time you tried to escape? Um, I think you remember. I don't, you don't have to get every detail, just whatever you, whatever you remember. I don't remember. I mean, I remember, I remember ripping the board off. I remember the door opening and then I don't, I remember waking up in a lot of pain on my back, on my side, on right here and here. So back of your head. Here and here. Your, right my here. neck was sore. Like I woke up and did that. And I, I know there's more. I just can't. And that's okay. My first understanding was that that was when you got um, burnt. Um, is that wrong? No, that's after that. Okay. Anytime. Um, so you were. When I would look up at her, she would hurt me. So anytime I wasn't on all fours with my head down, when she opened the door, I had to drop to the floor with everything on the floor and look down. And how are you told that? 
what point were you told were you told that or is that just something you learned through violence uh she said it it was don't look at me that was often don't look at me i can hear her accent still don't look at me i feel like i did that uh, like she never said get on all fours like there was never a get on all fours i feel like but she did say don't look at me there wasn't a specific command is that what you're asking me yeah there wasn't excuse me sorry there wasn't a specific command for that um, so how do you know the burn was results or for a punishment for that very first one why why do you think that i'm sorry what was your question I'm so sorry. when you were burnt you said it was punishment for that first attempt why do you think that that was something completely different. The burns, I don't, the burns were not punishment for the window. The other, the other hurting was for punishment for the window. The burns didn't come until a little later. Um, this one on my arm um, was from making noise. It wasn't from whipping, ripping the window off because I feel like ripping the window off, there was just so much going on. These were for making noise. So the, the burn on your left forearm, um, do you remember how they how that happened? Um, or what it was used? I want to say, I want to say it was a piece of metal. I, they just, they weren't in the room often. I'm trying to remember, because she touched me several times. It wasn't just once. It was this one that she held on for a long period of time. It was these ones that I jerked away and then held that one on. These I jerked away and then it was grab my hand and holding it down and then putting it down. But I can't recall what the damn thing looked like. That's okay. Do you remember what noise you made? Or what were you trying to the cable, and when you moved the cable, it made a really loud noise. And were both of, um, referring to the old one and the young one, were they both in the room at that time? At which time? When my the arm burn. was burned? Yes. No, it was just the older one, but the younger one was near the door. Not in, but out, outside the door, rather. Could you see her, or did you just think she was in? I could hear her. What did you hear her doing? Yelling at the older one. Uh, was it in English? No. Did it sound, what did the yelling sound like to you? Was it a pleasant conversation, angry no. conversation? It was an angry conversation. There's some words that I wrote down that I can remember. Right. Yeah. Do you want to move on to another, the other incident? What do you mean by other incident? So you're back. Yes, I do. I'm trying to not... Sure, you need to take a break for some food or water, and then we can come back to this. So, uh, I'm gonna have I'm having the girl for the photos. So if we take a break and we can have to take some photos, take those photos of you that we talked about earlier about the uh, brand. Okay. Maybe we can discuss that a little bit and see where we're at for this day. You seem like you're getting tired. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you're hungry. I don't know. So if you, <laughs> I don't know. level of frustration to get more elevated than it already I'm just is. angry that I can't like I'm trying to think of things and I can't actually recall them this is it's just getting frustrating to me well, like trying to recall like step because time is so um, like it's hard to have like a timeline of things and everything's like molding together and this happened no wait this happened before it no but it didn't. It's okay like I'm though. trying not to be confused by things because there was no. It's okay to be freeform where you're just kind of just throwing stuff out there okay. and not trying to piece it together because you're piecing it together is not, it's just not going to work for you right now. So just throwing it out there saying, well, I remember this. And if you say, do you remember if it's before or after? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. What, tell me about this. Tell me. Just getting that stuff out versus trying to put it in some sort of timeline for you. 
just doesn't seem like it's working for you. Okay. And it's, looks like it's increasing your anxiety and <laughs> okay. tolerance level. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to take some time, you want to. Just break these things over. That was the first interview. She's done a couple of incredibly notable things, all for the purpose of manipulating the interviewers. There's the obvious, making herself smaller to seem weaker and less capable of hurting herself, hiding her face whenever she tries to portray intense emotion, and indicating that she doesn't know what happened per se, but telling them what she feels happened. But already, the interrogators would be fielding some red flags. Her incredibly animated speaking style when it wasn't appropriate. Her body's incongruence with what she was saying she was feeling. And how her kidnappers didn't sexually exploit her and basically kept her as a pet for a couple of weeks would all indicate that she was holding something back from them. It's likely at this point they believed that she, scared of what her husband would think and fearful of this becoming public, was lying about the sexual assault. But as we know, that wasn't the case. The following is the second interview taken days later, as made available by True Crime Circus. A real horse, if you go and ride it, <laughs> do the side note. Well, I think we are ready to get started. If everyone else is ready to eat. Comfortable enough? Yep. All right. This is incredible. What's that? I, this is very good. You good? All right. Yes, I'm great. Fire, you fell asleep in that chair already? <laughs> <laughs> uh, today's date's Tuesday, November 29th, 2016. It's 1231 hours. Brian Jackson uh, here with Sherry Papini, Keith Papini, Kyle Wallace. Angie. Melis. What's that? Melis. Melis from the DE's office. Um, well, I'll, I'll <coughs> start us off a little bit and you can take it up from there. But obviously, um, from yesterday, it kind of ended with you giving uh, Kyle a very good description of the layout of the room that you were in. And we took a break. Uh, for some photographs, and then we shut it down just for for fatigue. Um, so I don't know, like we said yesterday, <clears throat> uh, this process is all about how you want to regurgitate stuff and give it to us. I mean, we do have some questions, obviously. Um, but as far as getting started today, I don't know if yesterday jogged some more memories or if there's things you want to add. Um, but basically, we, we can just start with... Uh, with you at whatever point you want to pick us up and continue on. If you're okay with that, you good? Yeah. All right. Whenever you're ready. Um, oh, I thought you were going to ask me a question. Would you, would you like some questions? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I, we can do some questions if you like, if you want to start that way. I think that's probably best. Okay. Well, <laughs> There's then, a lot of everything, so I don't know where to go or. Well, then let's. Um, or well, yesterday when we started talking, we talked throughout the day, and we never. I have a note here that we never touched the topic of your hair being cut. Is that something we can talk about now? Yes, if you would like to. Yes. As mentioned previously, when Sherry was found, she was in a state of despair. She wanted to look like she went through hell, and did a number of things to ensure that was how she looked. She starved herself while staying at her ex-boyfriend's apartment, choosing to only eat half an apple a day and continue to work out. She blacked out all of the windows in the home, making her vitamin D deficient and pale, and she cut off all of her hair and branded herself. But what she didn't realize is that by cutting off her hair, she was fundamentally hurting how believable her story was. As previously discussed, there are a few reasons why someone would kidnap an adult woman, and all of them involve sexual assault, whether that be at the hands of a kidnapper or through sex trafficking. 
we can infer that Sherry wanted to make it appear that she was going to be sex trafficked, and that these two women were just keeping her for a short time. However, if that was the case, they wouldn't have cut off her hair. Cutting off another person's hair in this manner is more in line with humiliation and degradation. You see it when a man kills a woman who scorned him. He seeks to destroy her femininity after death. But this wasn't that. If you're going to sell a woman to the black market, you want her to be as attractive to men as possible. This one action, which Sherry didn't think through, led to the majority of people feeling as if something was truly wrong with her case, and pulling the thread, destroying the sweater. What's your question? Where would you like me to go in that direction? How did your hair get cut during this ordeal? Um, like what led to it? Yes. I'm not sure. I And I keep trying to think about that. Um, I think, I think, it, okay, the, I'm not sure what led up to it, but the, cable that was where the cable was attached at the top anytime you made a, a movement or moved it um it made a really loud noise so when i would make noise they would rush in um to the room um and that's that's generally where trying to remember that day everything like what specifically made that happen I I I think I was trying to make the bed I want to say I was smoothing out a blanket and it made that noise made the cable made, yes plank or whatever um I think that's why. I don't think there was anything else because the there wasn't anything in the trash can. So it was I don't feel like it was time for that maybe. Um it, I want to say it was just because there was a noise. Um the bigger one came in. I dropped to the floor. The bigger one came in. Um I had my hair pulled back already. I had already had my hair pulled back. I I think it was my original hair tie. Like, I don't feel like that was ever removed. Like, okay. I, I'm pretty sure I was wearing the same hair band. From, uh, that you put from on running. when you went running? Yeah. But, I mean, I never actually, like, took it out and looked at it. But, um, but I don't recall that ever being removed. Okay. Um, They said something in Spanish to each other. The other one was outside the room. Um, I was hit here on the shoulder. And then it was a yank backwards. Gotcha. It was a yank backwards. I feel like it happened really fast, but not. I don't know. That's, That's fine. Um, and then it was after she cut it, after she cut it, she had it in her hand. I was down. She was over me, had it in her hand. And then I felt it here, like mm -hmm. I felt like that, that, that blunt edge because mm -hmm. she had, like she had cut it above my hair tie, felt it here. And she said, I'm going to send it to your mother, or I'm going to send this to your mother. I'm going to send it to your mother. I can't remember exactly, but I'm going to, to your mother. And I remember When she was cutting it, it was very upsetting. And then she said that, and I kind of went. 
Sherry doesn't realize this, but every time she has to gloat about how smart and tough she was through this ordeal, she makes things harder to believe. Having your hair cut without your consent is a violent act, and having it done in such a wildly abusive fashion is traumatic. There are people who get their hair cut off in less egregious ways who feel entirely violated by the act. So the very thought that Sherry felt kind of bad when it happened, but scoffed when her literal kidnapper threatened to send her hair to her mother is ridiculous. Sherry wants to simultaneously appear weak and defenseless, but she also wants to impress the people around her. Sure, she was kidnapped, but she was smarter than these dumb women who love mariachi music. It's an incredibly strange thing to behold. And it was one of those moments where it was emotional for me that she was cutting my hair. And I feel like her saying that almost pulled me back into survival mode, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, it also made me feel like she didn't know me mm. as a person. And that, um, and that was it. Um, where did, where did your hair, the hair that was cut off, where did it end up? I have no idea. I certainly didn't know she left, so. Yeah. And that's a, that, I mean, that, that's a fair answer. I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. Do you uh, recall what they used to cut your hair? I didn't see anything. I never saw anything. Did you hear any sounds? Like, like, like a scissors, clipping? Like a scissors would make? Yeah. Or anything I, like that? And if you don't know, if you can't think about it, I can't, don't I, push Yeah, yourself. I don't, I don't, I can't remember exactly. Okay. Like whether it was like a sniffing sound or no. just a <laughs> Um, I can't remember exactly. Okay. Do you remember if she had to leave the room and leave the room and then come back? She <clears throat> didn't come back. Okay. The other so one didn't... came back, but she didn't come back. Okay. And you just for small time references, not big ones. Um, was this before or after the burn on your arm? This one? Mm-hmm. I want to say it was after. I'm pretty sure it was after. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember if my arm hurt that day. <laughs> no, I think it was, um, I think it was after. And then before or after uh, the burn on your back, if you can remember. If not, don't worry about it. Before. Okay. You've made a couple references. <clears throat> yesterday and today about the cable making a noise or a loud noise. Mm -hmm. Is it a metallic, like metal on metal, like a clank? Okay, we mm -hmm. never really clarified that. Mm -hmm. we, um, we have a bolt in our garage and I was able to touch that and it was very... Oh, um, back to reference to the pole? That's what it felt like, yeah. The alternate. I don't know if that's called a bolt. Sorry. I don't... Yeah. Anyway, I touched it. That's what it felt like. <laughs> and I, I mean, I had scratched my hands, but that was so early in the beginning. I mean, I have like little scars and stuff somewhere and, you know, under fingernails and things, but yeah, it was really hard to get a good grip on it because it was sharp. Sharp as in, it felt like it was like, cutting you or just hurt when you touched it? I know we touched upon it yesterday, but you see, you mentioned that you touched something in your garage yeah. and it's, you know, it's just a, that's the, and like an all thread type bullet. It was just sensitive to the touch or did it feel like it was going to cut you? Um, well, you know, like I mean, I was gripping it very hard. Gotcha. Um, I mean, gotcha. Yeah. I was gripping it hard. I don't, I don't know how to answer that. Sorry. You did fine. We'll yeah. move on from that. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Good call. Um, that's all I have regarding the hair. Um, we're, so obviously, um, we've talked about it a couple of different times. So when you made noise, they immediately would come in. Was there any ever a time where you made noise and they never came in? No, I don't think so. I mean, there was maybe once where I like made a, a slight, but then I'd like freeze. Um, but no, it was pretty, pretty much almost every time. 
almost every time. Was there any time where you felt that you were in the room and you were the only person in the house? No. No, because you could almost, it was almost like you could feel the, the movement of the house or even um, because there was times where the radio or whatever it was that was outside was blaring quite loudly where they'd still hear me somehow and they'd still like the radio would be super loud and I would try to do something by using that as some kind of muffle. Like when I pulled the screw out of the wall of the outlet, um, um, that that muffled the sound of that. And then I had it in my hand and I could use it without moving the cable. Like I could use that to pick at that lock on the bed if I had the chain here and held it with my legs, I could use the screw without moving the cable on there without making any noise. Um, but to answer your question, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. There, I could, I could sometimes feel, sometimes hear a door. Um, I could, I feel like the vehicle was nearby that window because I could hear the vehicle and maybe there was times where I couldn't hear it but I did hear it rather not I don't maybe there's times I didn't hear it every time but uh, there was times where I could hear it when you're referring to hearing the vehicle what do you a mean door shutting and like that um, that crunchy gravelly noise that tires make when it's backing or forwarding on something that is not pavement. Do you have any recollection of like exhaust sounds or engine noise? Honestly, I would be terrible at that anyway. <laughs> Did you ever Car hear wise. like, well, I mean, driving down the road, you see, you know, a larger yeah, vehicle and it you, has a growling noise or it's just, you know, I feel gone. like if I maybe heard something that would be a little easier for me, but um, it was not a distinguishable noise. I don't know. I think I, I honestly, uh, yeah, it's not a distinguishable noise. I heard the sound of the door shutting. I feel like that would be, um, I was listening for more than the engine noise or exhaust. Is that what you were listening I just, I just didn't know, like, say if there was any time where you were either laying down or you were quiet in your room and then you heard a I vehicle was start quiet. up. <laughs> Did you ever hear a vehicle start up? And if so, what did it sound like? Um, I don't know is an okay answer. I don't know. I think it just sounded like, like it didn't hear any like extra clanging or anything or like the, I don't know. Okay. I would say it just sounded like a normal vehicle. That wasn't something I acutely paid attention to right there. Fair enough. Did you ever hear multiple doors opening or closing at the same time? On the car? Yeah. No. So it was only ever one? One door at a time. I And I remember listening for that. And at a time where, I mean, every time the vehicle would leave, it would be one door closing as opposed to, obviously not everybody closing and opening the door at the exact same time. Mm, right? No, because I feel like you would still be able to hear yeah. that it was two doors. I just wanted to clarify those sure. like, the one at a time. So every time the vehicle would leave or come back, it was always only one, yes. one door opening or shutting. Yes. Okay. You referenced earlier the radio outside. Where was the radio outside? I never actually saw it, but um, I want to say near the door. I mean, the sound was coming from where the door was located, but I never actually saw it physically. But the radio outside of the door, but still remaining inside of the residence. Correct. Okay. Were there any times, you said the majority of the times when um, either of the females would come in, uh, there was usually um, both of them were there. Were there any other any times where it was just uh, one of them? Mm, no, 
every, well, that's hard to say because I would be on all fours with my head down. Um, yeah, that's hard to say, but, well, they would talk to each other, so I knew the other one was close by. Um, ask me your question again. Uh, are there times where you believe that only one of the females was inside the room at times? As opposed to them both inside the together. room, yes. But the other, there would always be one nearby. Okay. But inside the room, one at a time, yes. Did either, so let's say during their hitting you or being violent towards you, was there any time that one of the females would try to stop the other one? Yes. Can you describe some of those moments? The the younger one, I feel like I could, because I couldn't understand her, but I feel like her body language was um, the pointing and very, or this, this is a, you know, body language wise, it doesn't matter what language you speak. I mean, um, you know, she had, she, I've seen, i because I can't, I did, I was never allowed to look them in the face, but I did see this signal with her hand facing that way, which is stop, obviously. But, um, oh, sorry, this is uh, making my stomach hurt. Um, that the little one, the the bigger one was very forceful and, um, it's, it just, to me, the little one would defend herself and do what was um, asked, maybe. I, again, I don't speak Spanish, but, um, but I feel like the bigger one enjoyed it and the little one did not. Does that, does that make mm -hmm. any sense? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I definitely, be, the things like the burn, cutting my hair, the burn on my arm, the chain, the lock, that was all from the bigger one. It was not from the little one. The little one would feed me most often. The little one's the one that I said with the trash can. She was the one that would stand in the doorway at the shower. What you usually eat? She was the one that would bring in the clothes also. The bigger one never did that. You're yeah. asking questions. Sorry. I thought, Sorry. That, no, I that's thought okay, you were on, I thought you were on our standard pod. Anyway, so. What'd you, what'd you eat? Or what'd they give you to eat? Um, what's it called again, babe? I keep forgetting the name Cream of that. Wheat. Cream of wheat but it was like dry, like barely mixed. And um, rice, tortillas. One day I got two apples, a cracker, but they were weird. They were like, I wanna say they were kind of like animal crackers, but not really. They, didn't, they definitely certainly didn't taste like animal crackers. They weren't anything that I'd ever seen before. I hid those. Anything that wasn't, um, you know, and sometimes it was like scraps, like the fat off of a piece of meat or something like they had just scraped it off of a plate. Um, more often than not, it was just rice or, um, I keep forgetting the name. Thank you. Sorry. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah. Or a tortilla, like a corner or something like that. Or, uh, one time it was a piece of bread, like the end piece, mm -hmm. the end piece. Um, I feel like it could have been wheat bread, but it was the end piece. That's kind of hard Store to say. Store Yes. Here's a dumb question for you. Do you recall if the apples had a sticker on them? No. They were waxy. They red apples? Uh, I taste? would say they were like that shade between red and green, 
like I don't want to say they were like the all the way because there's the apples that are round and then they have the bump on the bottom. They were mm -hmm. fully round and they were that in between red and greenish and they were waxy and mealy and <laughs> bruised. Um, but Did they because I tried to suck all the water out of them. Did they give you any food or um, plates or utensils that you can recall had any stamping, never manufacturing? Utensils. There was never utensils. It was always either a paper towel or like the, um, uh, not a styrofoam plate, not the wax coated plate, like the actual like really super cheap paper plate mm -hmm. with like the ridges. Yeah, the little pleats or whatever. Thank you. Yes. Do you remember what style of rice? Like, uh... Steamed white rice. Sometimes it was a Spanish rice. It definitely tasted like it was like a homemade Spanish rice. I've made Spanish rice before even. So it definitely, um, cause I, <laughs> I make the box Spanish rice more often than not. And it was not, it didn't taste like that, but it was always gritty. And I even, there was one time where I like tried to pick it apart, but to look for something. <sighs> did you did you eat regularly or just sporadically? Or did they bring you food? Was it No, it was maybe I... once a day, but it it was hard because I feel like every time I would somewhat get on a routine <clears throat> to make to exercise my mind mm -hmm. of this is the time of the day because my body would, was starting to get hungry at the same time. Mm -hmm. I was always hungry, but like I would exercise at the same time and I would try to get a routine down. It would change as soon as I feel like maybe, see, it's hard because I feel like sometimes I felt like it was the next day, but then it could have been the same day or it felt like a day had gone by or but then it didn't because I would wake up at different times and I would fall asleep at different times. And then it would be, did I exercise already? I'm pretty sure I did that. Um, but um, I don't think it was more than once a day. Um, it was certainly not every day, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it was more than once a day. But again, days were difficult because of because I didn't sleep. It wasn't like I got up at certain time. I, I don't even know anything about time. But it's, there was a lot of sleeping for me, um, and that's one of the. I don't. I don't. The sleeping made it difficult to keep track. I, everything I tried to keep track of, there was no way to do it. I don't know. I think it was once a day, maybe every other day. In the room, did you make any markings or scratches on the floor or wall or anything while you were there? No. No, you, you know what I'm talking about as far as anything no. that known for markers? I mean, there's that screw. Mm -hmm. There's the screw in the wall. There's, um... no, I mean, at one time I tried to pull up the carpet, but I stopped because I figured what's the point if I can't get off the cable um, in the closet at the mm -hmm. back of the wall, but I stopped myself. But no, as for like marking and stuff like that, no, I did not. You touched on water a little bit. How did you get water? What was that? There was a plastic bottle of water with no label on it. <laughs> Every time, any time there were, I, I want, I feel like there, I only remember two showers, but I drank a lot of water every time I was in the shower. Um, the day before, Sherry said the opposite. She claimed that when she showered, she was forced to keep her head down and the water ran off her back. She also said that the showers didn't last for more than a minute. It's small and might seem like a nitpick, but because Sherry is lying about the smallest details of her captivity, she doesn't remember everything she has said. So this discrepancy is important. 
I'm trying to remember if the, the, like, the moment I got the bottle of water because I was allowed to have a bottle of water, which I rationed, but I don't remember. Did they ever like, I want to lean towards the, towards the end when I had it. Did they ever refill it or how did that? How yes. Did that yes. And that would happen too when the trash was changed over. But a lot, I mean, there was only, there was only one time I recall actually seeing the trash being removed. It was always that really yucky feeling of waking up and knowing they had been in the room, but me not remembering it. Um, you touched on some exercise stuff. What what type of exercises could you do without the chain rattling or anything like that? This is one of the most outlandish things that Sherry will go on to say. Again, it all stems from Sherry's need to impress those around her. Because even when she was kidnapped and chained in a small apartment, she still found time to work out. So if I had it tucked between my legs, that I could pull it tight mm -hmm. with no slack. And this was here and I could, because there was a tail to it and I could wrap that here. And then I would do one side and then I would do here, pull it tight and do the other side. Um, I mean, I don't know how to explain to you other than demonstrating how I had this tucked under here and would no. do, you know, these and... No, it makes um, sense to me. What? Yeah, it makes sense to me. I got yeah. it. And pulling it tight is just to keep the chain from clanking against the pole. Correct. You said you exercised your mind. What were you doing? What were you doing there? I... I would sing the song I sang to Violet. I would read the read the books I read to my children. I can hear my husband. I would mouth things he would sing in Christmas carols and the random jingles he would sing in our kitchen. Keith was here, what would Keith do? If Keith was here, what would Keith do? <laughs> As we now know, Sherry and Keith's relationship was wrought with infidelity on her end. She was constantly cheating on him with ex-boyfriends and people online, and he knew about it on some level. Even earlier in this interrogation, they brought up how she had previously flirted with and planned to meet up with an ex-boyfriend. Sherry didn't like her husband, and she faked a kidnapping to get away from him. So the question is, why would she state that she focused on him and the little things he would do that made her happy during her captivity? And the likely answer is, because she is trying to manipulate him. Keith had been upset about her cheating on him, and she, for a number of months, told him he was crazy and he was possessive, and just seeing things that weren't there. Then she fakes a kidnapping, and the police find that she did have some flirty messages with other men. But it's hard to be mad at your wife, who just survived a horrific ordeal. It's even harder to be mad at her when she is saying that you're the only reason she was able to survive, and she spent the last few weeks thinking about you and your family. It feels almost malicious to theorize that this is what she was doing in this instance, as asserting someone could be that cruel feels like a major leap. But again, none of what she is saying is true. She wasn't chained up in a closet, she was staying with an ex-boyfriend, who she had to manipulate into saving her from Keith. Um, I would try to go over shows in my mind. Um, shows that we, thank you, sorry. Shows that we would, Keith and I would watch. Um, to try and get some kind of gauge of time. How many times I sang the ABCs, <laughs> even. Um, yeah, I would mouth um, lines from New Girl. <laughs> um, and talk to my husband. 
I talk to my babies. I feel like when I talk to my babies, it would make me... <sighs> Hold on. More. I heard a story where you would use your sweatshirt as a... <laughs> and I... Can you tell me about that? It was a sheet. It was a sheet. And I rolled up the sheet and um, and I sang to it like my Violet. I, when Violet goes to sleep, I rock Violet on this arm. And I sing to her before I lay her down. And, and I, um, and I did that before I would go to sleep sometimes. Or, do you use that as like a manipulation to the women? Is that something that happened? They never saw that. That was something I would do in the room by myself. Right? <laughs> Gotta ask. How does that do with a broken nose? I saw it yesterday. It's like, so much better. It's oh. sore. Yeah, it's very sore. It's really only sore here now, but um, I feel like when I start crying, it starts swelling more. But, um, it's a good sore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a break for a little bit. Camera would like me to take a break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need there's some more wood on. Is yeah. that the beef and orange beef or something? What? I think I feel like that's what beef. That, that sounds like a, a fire extinguisher somewhere. And then I heard maybe the alarm. Yeah, I heard some beep 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 way off. Yeah, it sounded like it was. Okay. And it can be like mid July and Keith will sing Christmas carols. <laughs> or like. It's 102. No, I'm. I, it's I, now 107. Technology. It's just I don't want to have to do it when I got other things on my mind. Yeah. You know. I don't want to be listening to you and then hear that off and go, oh, what does that mean? It's yeah. okay. A little break is <laughs> nice. Absolutely. Yeah, that one was a tough one. I don't want to talk about my kids with that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we can skip it. Um, I, uh, are you guys ready? Yeah. To talk are you? Okay. Yeah. I feel like, um, it was the, the silence and the dark and the silence that really made me not okay. Everything else, I made it through and it was, it was okay. I could do it. It was the silence and that dark room and that every day feeling like something else is coming mm. and not knowing that anxiety of there's this something else is about to happen and not knowing that something else was about to happen. Well, there's no doubt that your strength, obviously you're here and uh, that that strength was able to hold you, put you through that. So I hope that means something to you, that your, your internal strength and drive has allowed you to get where you are today. I think that, that's, a, <clears throat> that's a new topic that's been surfacing in the world about you and rather than everything else, but you're resolved, so that's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Were there any times where the music wasn't on for yes. periods for like, were they consistent? Like, so like, let's say maybe it like cued like that they were going to bed so they would turn off the music or uh, was there any consistent time? Was that any, seemed to have been in a routine of some sort with the music coming on and off? No. I, um, no, I don't think so. Do you think the music was 
was the music ever tied to you hearing car doors shut? I don't think so. Because I, I would carefully listen for that, like if it was trying to cover that up. Um, no, that's when a lot of the uh, injuries occurred because it was always when I would think they weren't there. I would attempt movement and things. And, and occasionally it took them longer to get to where I was, but I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think so. I remember you touched Because it was different. I, I, no, I, I, it was different all the time. Continue. What was your question? Um, I remember you talking about yesterday that you could hear the TV um, parts every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Because the radio wasn't on the whole time. Yeah. So with yeah. those TV, do you remember any commercials, anything that would signify? No, because I kept falling asleep. Cool. Um, it was Spanish something or other, and then I would fall asleep. Um, I feel like for me, it was, thank God she's sitting down and watching TV and it was a moment where I would just rest, I think. Um, yeah, the radio was terrifying. <laughs> the sound of the radio was scary to me, but the TV was, I feel like I would just kind of and rest a little more. Um. But probably like just some primarily Spanish, very rarely English TV or ever English. It was TV. never English. It was never English. Um, but the TV was not on often. It was a rare that um, that I actually heard a TV. It wasn't very loud. Maybe there could have been English, and I just didn't hear it very well. So it wasn't very loud. Was there anything, um, we've talked about a lot of uh, um, the bruises that become, um, like the, the bruises from the injury, or them injuring you regarding like making noise. Um, we've talked about the burn marks on your arm. Is there any, besides the one on the back, that we'll have to talk about eventually. But is there any other, because it looks like your legs, um, do you know how you receive most of those injuries on your legs? No, but uh, even originally before then, I bruise really easily. Mm -hmm. So it could, I mean, it could have even been something that I possibly could have done. Um, but no, because it was a lot of... Um, this one I feel like was this, or it was a lot of blocking or kicking or, and I, try, I, I don't, there, she had, the bigger one would hold something. I just, I'm, I'm trying to remember feeling, it was a lot of hitting with something, not punching or shoving. Um, I didn't like being in the closet. It was a lot of shoving around the closet area. Um, Do you remember specifically being hit? I'm sorry, Being the kicked. fire popped it. Yeah. Um, kicked? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't remember or if we did or didn't talk about yesterday about your nose and how that occurred. Um, I was woken up by it and I, I can't remember if it was like this or if it was like that, but I was woken up by it. So, so you were sleeping? Correct, on the bed. Was there anything, what happened right after that? Um, I was woken up, I was told to change, 
and you're welcome to put the pipe, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, whatever. I was told to change. There was already clothing on the bed. Um, I felt so dizzy. My ears were ringing. I, when I tried to put the sweatpants on, I fell over. Did you, were you exchanging clothes at that time? Or were you getting completely dressed? Yes, I had clothes on already and put on the clothes that were on the bed. Is that your question? Yes. Yes. I'm just trying to help focus and not try to dwell on all the, if that helps or not. Um, I'm obviously, I'm assuming it was, it was bleeding. How did you clean that up? Um, it, it was already on the other, this, and it was on the other clothes. I did one of these numbers. It didn't bleed very much. It didn't bleed. Um, yeah, it really didn't bleed very much. Um, it wasn't like gushing blood. Oh. Um, did um, any of that end up on the walls or on the floor? Or, um, I would assume the... so. I mean, I, I, there wasn't anything that I know of on the walls, but gosh, I don't know. Um, well, okay. Did that. Ouch, that's sore. Um, Sorry. No, that's okay. It had to have been on the floor because I set the sweater down. So to answer your question, yes, it has to be on the floor. It wasn't um, profusely bleeding, so I wasn't. I wouldn't say that it's. It was dripping onto the floor. Um, it was. I. <laughs> I was focused more on my eyes because um, I, I couldn't see. <laughs> um, yeah, it really didn't bleed that much. I'm doing this. I feel like I, I was doing that a lot. Mm -hmm. Like it was this very like. Your eyes are watering. Yeah. Is there any other injuries that we haven't touched upon besides the obvious? No, I mean, things that I did with the zip ties or the pulling, breaking my fingernails on things, but no, I didn't see them very often. There was a lot of alone, oh, just alone. When you're talking about alone, were they, me were they in the, in the, the house? Me in the room by myself, me in the room by myself. Okay. Was it any time did you feel like that you were left alone at that location where they may have gone off site for an extended period of time? No. Anytime I thought that I was alone, it, I would end up making noise in some way or another. And... It would seem like somebody was on the premises? Yes. There would be times where there would only like uh, be one opening the door at a time so I feel like there could have been a time maybe there was just one there. Um, there had to have been times there was only one there because there was a fireplace. So you would have to go outside to get wood, right? So there, there had to have been times there was only one. And the vehicle leaving. Right. Um, and I mean, even stocking up, I'm sure, I'm, I don't know, maybe there was a grocery, I mean, you would have to go to a grocery store or something at some point, I would think. I don't know. I want to go through a list of some things, and it's re going to require hearing. So how do you want to access that part of your brain? Usually when I try to hear something, I close my eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Yes, no's, I don't know's are all fine answers. Okay. Farm animals? 
No. Cows, horses? No. Chickens? No. Equipment? Farm equipment? No. Tractors? No. Buses? No. UPS truck? No. Am I going too fast? Nope. Passing vehicles? No. Chainsaws? No. Train? No. Train whistle? No. Honking? No. Geese honking? No. Doorbell? No. Telephone? No. Now that you're listening, do you recall any other sounds that I haven't? The asked? fireplace, the creak, the door, the creaky door to the fireplace, the flushing of a toilet. Pots and pans in a kitchen. Garbage disposal. Some kind of... Airplane? No, some kind of like ticking, clicking, doing something that requires a ticking or a clicking or the radio. The TV. I have a sound to ask about. Go ahead. Long distance gunshots, like shotguns from people bird hunting. No. Have you ever heard, do you know what sound I'm referring to? No. Yes, I have and no. Yes, we live in Mountain Gate. On occasion. I, did, I imagine you probably heard a few long distance gunshots, so I figured. Yes. I didn't want to assume because assuming means something, but we saw some bucks in the neighborhood. So in my yard. We were going somewhere and we all stopped. Like, there are wall hangers. <laughs> I mean, where that white tail is around here, that muley is there that class of buck. Come on. We were all out one night when I was out hiking, you know, behind the looking you know, and, uh, we came back and we're all sitting there and it was like fifteen feet away from us and it just walked. My buddies are all, <laughs> but they don't want to stop. <laughs> They're so annoying because they eat everything. Yes, they do. And then that motion to sensor thing that we have, bing bong, bing bong. I'm like, get yard. out of the way, <laughs> the bing bong. Our dog has like a wireless fence though, mm. and they know that he has to stop now. Oh yeah. So he <laughs> just walks around, knows it's cool. And my dog's like, come step over the line, buddy. <laughs> Back to the sounds. School bells? No. Alarms? No. Sirens? No. N nothing outside the house other than what you've already talked about as far as what you can recall? Footsteps. There was... Um... I could hear the wood being brought in. I know that sound, the clink of a of like stacking wood. Mm -hmm. But never a chainsaw, an axe. Running water? Yes. Running water? Like a river creek? Oh, I thought you meant like the sink. <laughs> Creek. You read the chat. Yes. yes. I, was I, was like, really? I, was thinking, I finally got, got one. it. <laughs> I finally <laughs> hit a winner. I We're in next to a river and ran in there in California. Yeah. No. I thought you meant sorry. I sink water. <laughs> a pebbly brook. No. Uh, have you ever lived in a subdivision? So, like, all like the normal sounds that maybe we're not listening to, but like you're always hearing anything like that that's because now you now live 
in the country as opposed to when you it's have so the, pretty noisy where we live well, for some reason. But yes, but I you did, have the two yes. different the yep. ambient that you never really um, do you my, feel okay, so have you been to my parents' storage facility? Yes. I lived in the subdivision right behind that. Okay. So do you feel based on what you were hearing um, or lack of hearing, do you feel that you were more rural side or more like out country um, or even more isolated more than just country or like your neighborhood now old neighborhood you've lived in i listened for neighbors cars things i heard nothing i heard the birds um kind of birds we haven't gotten the app open yet, but I know I heard a flicker because I know what the flicker said. Heard a flicker where you were, or a flicker on the on the road before you got taken. Flicker from the window, um, in the room, um, and then other smaller, smaller birds. I will listen to some for you. I apologize that I can't remember the names of them. I will I will listen to some for you. Um, recall hearing like the breeze through like a tree or like the creak of a tree or anything. I don't recall any of that. A quail. Barking dogs. Do you hear any barking dogs? No. I did on the last day. That was scary. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, in, on the road. On that road near when I was trying to go to the... Let's talk about it. I'm sorry. Let's talk about that. I interrupted you and talked over you and didn't hear you. Sorry. Let's talk about that since since it's there in your mind. Where would you like to begin? The barking, <laughs> the barking dog? Uh, the barking dog was when I was trying to figure out how to get into, can I ask you, what was that? Was it a, is it a shipping yard? Is it a junkyard? What was that Which fenced in area? Next to the freeway. Um, well, there's two. There's like a lumber yard and there's like a propane yard. Okay, there was a, I want to say like a modular type of house like a, or like an office would have been like an office building. That's one of the two. Yeah, was, it on the, was it on the same side of the freeway as the church or on the other side of the freeway? The opposite side. That's the propane what place. What was that? Propane place. Okay. That's where I was trying to get in, but couldn't, and then heard a dog bark and went, no. Nope. Oh, yeah, because that's where the dog is. Yeah. Oh, right? oh yeah, I'm glad I ran the other direction. <laughs> were, you, were you on the, near the front gate, like the entrance way to that place? Uh, or do you know? I mean, the corner, um, the corner that connected to the street that okay. I was on. There was a house, I went near the house, I stood in front of the house, looked at the house and went, um, it was very dark. I want to say there was a mailbox. I think I stood by where there was maybe a mailbox or something, but it was very dark. There was no lights on. Um, it didn't. What am I? It didn't look inviting. I think it's, I think I know the house you're referring to. Okay. It's on the same side. Well, it's on the west side of the freeway on the front of the roads that. If you're up on the overpass mm -hmm. and heading west, I don't know if you know your directions very well. Not particularly. <laughs> on the same side as the where the dog barking dog was. Yes. Kind of around the corner. Okay. Is that the house you're that you believe you were at? No, it was on the same street as the where the barking dog was? Okay. Correct. So once you once you try to find help in that area, what'd you do next? Well, I didn't find help. <laughs> right. So, and then I'm talking about I'm talking about in that area where the barking dog okay, was, so, the creepy so house. There was, <laughs> there was that creepy house that I left. I went to the 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 fenced area. Um, the entire time I was trying to um, get the zip tie off. I couldn't reach it with my mouth, so I was trying to, um, I, don't, I don't know what 
this was called. I was trying to use that. Hose clamp? Thank you. To get that off. Um, ran on top of the freeway. Um, it was very difficult because I, my feet were very cold. My ankles were very wobbly. Mm -hmm. And I was very dizzy. I was very dizzy. I was very, um, I don't want to say short of breath, but short of breath be from the screaming. Mm -hmm. um, and then ran downward. And the on-ramp, off-ramp, there was a truck parked with no lights on. Like a big and rig? I, yes. And I stood there and stared at the big rig and thought, there's probably someone inside there. I don't think I want to go knock on that door. And then I saw the lights. No, that's not right. I saw the lights to the church before I saw that truck. Um, I didn't know it was a church. Um, ran down and around, um, kept losing my breath, and then um, ran down and around and thought if I could break into something, even if it's a gas station and the police were called, if I could just break into something and be somewhere. Um, but I couldn't, I shook the door and I banged on the door and I looked for windows, there was no windows. Um, and then ran back towards where the freeway entrance was and ran down the on-ramp. I keep wanting to say off-ramp, it's on-ramp. Um, and then just ran as fast as I could until I got to um, the streetlight. And then, and I still had the... Um, pillowcase? Is it a pillowcase? Mm -hmm. um, when I tried, when I got to the street light, I tried to remove the zip tie again and then pulled it tighter, um, but was very, was waving the pillowcase and screaming and no one stopped. I was there for a very long time uh, until that trucker I even walked out into the middle of the freeway mm -hmm. and cars drove around me, like literally drove around me. And then I stepped back, I stepped back and thought, there's a chain around my waist. Perhaps I should tuck this into my pants. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't help. It, it seems like it felt like it was a very long time standing there to me. It felt like it was a very long time. Um, and then that one truck stopped and, um, but stopped aggressively. <laughs> hmm. Um, and then it was just, I, the trucker got out and I saw him. You am I still going the right direction that you're asking for, or you're doing great? Um, I don't want to interrupt you. And then I started screaming, Call 911, call 911. And then he started stepping towards me, and then I got scared. And, um, and then I just wanted to talk to Keith. It was like everything after that was just slow, and I just I just wanted to talk to my husband, and no one would let me talk to him. Sorry. Yeah. It's not too bad. So um, <laughs> No, no one Kinda. would let me talk to Keith. That was very, um, it was very frustrating. And I remember falling over several times. I was very dizzy. I was spitting a lot because I, I mm -hmm. screamed until blood came out 
and I even said, there's blood in my mouth, there's blood in my mouth. And he, one of them, I don't know. What, Tree flexing. How's heating up? How's heating up? Tree flexing a little bit. That's fun. <laughs> that ought to be a party tonight. <laughs> um, tonight, when that little thing cools back down, we'll make this. <laughs> so, talking with Kyle, and that there was some that you recall when you were dropped off in that area. Can you go back to that? Tell us what you remember. I don't, I'm trying to remember whether the car pulled over, or spun around. I don't remember feeling any of that. I remember feeling, not feeling, well, I guess feeling and hearing the click, a uh, clipping. And then, um, get out. I even hear her accent still with that. Um, and falling out of the vehicle. I don't remember if she touched me, if she grabbed me, if she pulled me. I remember falling. It didn't feel great. Um, I remember falling. Pulling and then seeing the vehicle dark and then walking, trying to run towards it. I was so dizzy. Um, and then, I mean, it was so far away already. And then trying to figure out where I was, where the road was. I, I chased after the vehicle at first, but was I, I'm sorry. You're good. Is that your question? Yeah, yeah, I'm answering that. Do you, have you looked at maps? Yes, Keith and I looked at that. Do you have that? I have a copy of it too, okay. if you want, we can go over it together. Sure, if that's what you would like. It would. It would help us put some pieces together because sure. we're trying to. You're okay with it? Look at this. He's looking at the same thing. I've already looked at that. So let's make sure we're looking at the same thing because it's That one's just smaller. Yep, that's the same thing. So <laughs> it's a little larger than your phone. I got a bigger phone. <laughs> this is my work phone. <laughs> um, what do you need? From me, what are you well, doing? Answers. well, if you can just, I see all the circles here, and I know Keith and you guys have talked about this. Mm -hmm. So, can you explain to me, like, for instance, what's this orange circle mean here? Um, I believe that to be where the vehicle stopped. And that's, and, and that's where you got out? Correct. Okay. And then looking here at the map, obviously, this right here is I 5. Whoops. Mm -hmm. Right? That's okay. Yeah. And so then there's this red circle here at the corner of where I think those are Keith marked them as stopping points. Okay. Right. Go ahead, Keith. Talk. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> These. Uh, yeah. 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 So I'll just go through it real quick and then That's fine. Can explain it. So this is where she believes she was dropped off and the car circled around. Once she was dropped off there, that car, according to her, says it goes this way and it had all the lights off. She then ran this way passing this house mm -hmm. and that road just got dark 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 dark, dark. i started she, running that way yeah. following the vehicle yes then she said oh, that's not gonna work turned around came to here every these are basically the steps if there's a lot of the pink dots that's because she stayed there for a while whether it was to take a breath or whatever she then continued to run back this way she basically fell from exhaustion and dizziness at this little spot then she ran to the shipping yard, mm -hmm. you know, what she calls shipping yard. Mm -hmm. That's where she heard the Sorry. dog. It's okay. Then she <laughs> ran across and got on the very, basically right in the middle of the uh, freeway on the overpass and tried to get her bearings on where the heck am I. And, mm -hmm. and that's where she saw signs of I-5 and north. And she figured I need to 
go north. Ran across, she said there was something to do with a parked vehicle right here. Mm -hmm. Then went across to the church and went all around the church trying to break into that place. Like, how does a church not yeah. have windows? Well, the Jehovah oh, Witnesses, their windows get broke out all the time. Gosh. So then she went a little bit Because I saw a security camera, too. Mm -hmm. So You're on. You're, on. <laughs> You're running pretty quick. You're pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, then she ran a little bit further. That's off the picture. Mm -hmm. Then went all the way down. And there's a street light, mm -hmm. and on the GPS picture, there's actually a truck wagon. That's it. I was running to my husband, so right, yes, so I was running pretty that's fast. Dots, that's what the dots in the circles okay. mean. If you can go from yes, there. that's exactly right. I mean, that's exactly right. I I spent the most time, I would say, here mm -hmm. and here. I mean, it just it really, it really felt like forever on the side I, of the freeway. I would say you were probably on the side of the freeway for at least 20, 25 minutes, if not longer. Because you left the church at four, that time. you left at uh, four twelve real time, right? There was a stop. I mean, there and there was a stop before I got to the freeway. I did stop once before I got to the freeway because I had to kind of like take a moment and because I when I get that like super, you know, it's that like buzzing in your ears, tingly feeling like you if you don't drop to your knees, you're gonna pass out. <laughs> um, so there was a stop before. I made it to the street light. Well, you left the field street of view. Light, freeway light? Yeah, either one. Thank you. You left the field of view of the church at around 412. Okay. And then the 911, came, the 911 came in at 439. So from the church, you know, you, that's about 100 yards from where you were, you know, when you left the roadway to go on the on-ramp. Okay. And you were moving pretty good. Um, so that's why I'm saying you probably were on the freeway for 20 minutes easily, which is sickening, but. Well, and to me, I felt like it was like early evening because there were mm -hmm. so many cars on the road. Yeah, it's good. So it was Thanksgiving morning. Yeah, I had, but you well, didn't know that. <laughs> no, I thought it was like like seven or eight o'clock at night. Hmm. Um, and that's why I I felt like that's why there was so many cars on the road. Yeah, no, there's a lot of traffic at that, at that time. There was a lot of traffic. Yeah. The lady we talked to made it all the way up to Crescent City. What's that? One of the ladies who called made it all the way up to Crescent City before she passed you on her way to Crescent City. Yeah, we talked to her at noon. She was in Crescent City. Hmm. Um, As in she called? No, we called her. Oh. She called yeah. 9 She was one of the 911 callers, and then we called her. She, oh, saw, you told me she saw a lady was in the roadway and called it in, but the other one. The one that you've heard about, we talked about. Okay. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, so one of your hands is free, and I, if I remember right, it's your right hand. But um, Correct. How did that become free? Um, there was a clipping noise. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but I want to say, yeah, I'm not sure I didn't see it, but I want to say it was probably, well, I'm trying to, what did I feel? If I'm trying to think if there was the cable. I didn't hear, like, the clicking noise that like handcuffs would make certainly i feel like it may have been another cable here under here i i feel like maybe like maybe it had been looped under it was really tight like it was pulled tight this itself wasn't very tight but like i didn't have a lot of um pull room and how long had that been on? What? So how long was your um, your hands to your waist? Was that something new? Oh, that was new. Oh, uh, oh you mean the zip tie? Yes, yeah. the zip tie. This was new. I don't remember this being put on. I've been searching my brain for that. I don't remember the metal pieces being put on. And that is very frustrating because that's something that I should remember. Um, but I don't remember it that part, um, how they got on, because I couldn't get them off. And that's something I tried to do from the freeway, too. That's something that I'm trying to see that I cannot see right now. Okay. And that's normal. It's okay. 
long as you start losing. It's very frustrating. I can't imagine. <laughs> but it is normal. Other people have done the same thing. Uh, I... I'm sorry. Continue. Perfect. Um, so the, when, when the zip ties were put, when you were... Um, secured to your waist chain, however you want to call it. Um, what was the time between that occurring and you getting in the vehicle? I have no idea. I don't even remember the zip tie being put onto the chain. Um, That's okay. Um, I, I feel like that part is hard. Um, ow. That part is hard to recall for me because that was um, that was when I broke down. And I'm I'm having a very hard time dealing with that part because I'm disappointed that I didn't take the moment to try harder to do something else or escape and I um, it was my moment of breakdown and saying goodbye to my family and the after what I thought was I heard a gunshot and not anyone else knowing that if I didn't get the stupid cable off that um yeah i i think that's a hard that's a hard time to think about hmm. i'm frustrated with that because i could i should have just i should have taken that moment and i didn't but, you, but we're here. Don't beat yourself up over things that you should have done because what you did do allowed you to get where you are today. So obviously, you know. Hindsight 2020, you did the right thing. <laughs> don't Monday Monday quarterback things that you did because what you did do allowed you to get to where you are today. I, mean, I understand where you're coming from. But I hope you don't let that eat you up for very long. I mean, it's, it's not the feelings that you're having is normal. I, I feel like I'm just frustrated because that could have been a moment where I could have done something or sure. gotten or, her in some way or I... Or it could have been the catalyst for you not being here today. And that same that same thought, that's the... It could have caused them to do something more and been more aggressive with you where you were. So, I mean, look at it from both sides, you know what I mean? The best you can. I mean, what you did, you did everything right to get you to where you are today. Do you have any questions for me or Kyle right now? We've been asking you a lot for the last hour or so. I'll give you an opportunity real quick to kind of take a live break, but let's not... Let's not take a hard break because I think we're moving pretty good and getting some traction and maybe maybe getting to a point where we might be getting done real soon. Okay. So let's, if you can, do you have any questions for Kyle and I? Or Keith, do you have any questions for Kyle and I or things you want to chime in right now? Oh, yeah. Please do. Well, let's, let's have Keith yeah. take a Can you talk let's a little Keith bit, Keith, take please? the floor for a few yeah, minutes. Can I take a break and let uh, him talk for a moment? Uh, so just in conversations that we've had, um, some things that I don't know if they really got touched on. Uh, but one thing I know, you, you have a pretty big injury on your shin. And I, I thought you kind of remembered something, maybe hitting it, maybe on the car on the way in, getting forced in or, or being hit. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Because I even remember it's the doctor. It's the one on the right shin, isn't it? It was on this one. I can't older. Remember. But I remember the doctor was even, like like after a, he looked at it, he was like, oh, this one was a bad one, like a... It's a hematoma. Yeah. There's a contusion in hematoma, I think is what Dr. Monkey said. I saw some exactly. photos. Uh, you touched on it briefly. I saw some photos that looked like you'd been stomped or kicked. And you kind of touched on it. You said that there was some kicking at some point, right? 
Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. I'm hoping you guys can get like a shoe print off of it. Or well, something. we won't be. Yeah, that's good. Definitely, where there's some shoe prints. Yeah, and I can say that that's a boot print. There's impressions, but there's impressions. no impressions. Okay. But, um, so if you want, let's clarify some pictures or some entries, some bridges. Yeah. If you want, Are you cool with that? I will do my best. I don't know Sorry. you will, but I'm going to do my best least. for you. Yes. I have another hard. major thing, but I'll, I don't know if you want to wait till this is Go ahead, Keith. The other thing that is towards the last few days or hours, uh, she did notice they were arguing a lot. Yeah. And that she feels that she heard a very loud noise and explained it to me like a gunshot. Yeah, we're clear that. on yeah, we're clear okay. on that. And uh, and then she did say there was a very bad odor in the vehicle the last day, and she was trying to pinpoint sewage what that odor was. Yeah, it was like sewagey um, in the vehicle. And then that, obviously there was only one person after that. And ever since she did hear that sound, there was never the other mean lady. I have a question for you. Yeah. Did you guys have, prior to all this, maybe in October, September, did you guys have any work done at the house on your roof? Well, we had two people come to our house um, to do tile. Um, and I have their names. And. reason I'm asking is I got a tip today. Okay. 582, I believe. <laughs> or it will be by the time we get the office. That you folks had some people working on your roof that were Hispanic now. Okay. That ring a bell? Yeah. So that's, that's even further back. Okay. I was told a couple months before this went down. So we had, uh, I'll, I'll tell you exactly. Okay. Uh, I didn't think about that. Until just now. So well, that's why we're bringing it up. Yeah. So there is a. Uh, just have my towel. It was two other people. Prior to that, my house, there is a guy named Tino, and uh, a Mexican guy. He, Tino's painting. I think he had, and I've known him for a very long time because he's related to. His wife, Cindy, who is Jack, you know, the whole family of people that live out here. So, and I've known him for quite a while. He came out and I had him paint basically my entire house and it was extremely cheap in comparison to the other bids I got. Mm -hmm. As he was looking at things, it would be like a part of my house, maybe the wood was getting rotten. And he was like, hey, I can fix this for you. And I was like, do it. And my bathroom needed to be redone in the tile he had a person working for him who had barely any teeth, just a little guy, and I ended up finding out, I guess he lives not too far away. James, maybe, or something, I don't know. He, um, you know, these wouldn't normally be people I would associate with, but I was paying pennies on the dollar, so I was like, all right. So they came out, and they actually worked on my bathroom. He said he can do some tile, he said he could do all kinds of things, so I would work, and uh, they, so they actually painted my house, they did some tile on my floor, they did some drywall, and they replaced some boards or whatever around my house. Um, I was uh, just paying and paying and paying him, whatever kind of he asked, but towards the end, he made some major costly mistakes. So it basically came to, hey, um, I'm not going to pay you for this, this, and this because I have to rip all this out. My sink still doesn't work that way. We can't even take a bath downstairs because they messed up the plumbing. And that's going to cost me thousands of dollars to fix. Um, so he was a little bit upset with that, but after we went through everything he did, I paid him for everything that he did. I just didn't pay him for the other stuff I was going to have him do. And uh, that was basically the end of it. Um, so
somewhat recently, I had all these garage mats. Like, uh, like you would put, like, you know, if you're redoing a garage, it's nice rubber mats and had a ton of them. And I remember at the time he said, you know, hey, I'll take those. And so did my neighbor, Jack. And I remember I called Tino again, saying, hey, I remember you said you wanted these because I was trying not to be bad blood, but we didn't do, we messed up some so much stuff. Uh, so he never returned that call. And then Jack, my neighbor, of course, he came over his bobcat and I loaded them all up. Um, so he would be a Mexican guy that I know. I've known him for a very long time, so I would be very uh, upset if he's tied to this. And um, I'm not making those assertions. I'm just asking. For some yeah, follow yeah, yeah. Up. Um, so yes, he did work on my house, and he did get, um, uh, and I did pay him to do multiple different types of random stuff. How many people did he have working for? Him? Yeah, one guy that I remember, and then his daughter came to do like have a theater room, and she did that to paint Kelly. I remember since I was five. Oh, you could do that. <laughs> no, you um, I believe his name is James something. I'm almost positive you guys already know about him because it came up with my, my A-team guys because he lives... I mean, I can find out everything about this guy. And he's just a little little tiny guy that just probably drinks 1,700 sodas a day kind of a, kind of a character. Not eating chicken sodas. Huh? Not eating, just drinking sodas. Pretty much, yeah, and he's, all his teeth are just real bad. And uh, he definitely didn't work under any kind of contracting thing. It would, it would have been Tino that held that. Um, but like the electrical, they, like they did it, they cut too big a hole, so I can't even put a plate around it. My tiles, like this, so I couldn't put my sink in. Um, all these things he said they could do, and you know, it was one of the things where I learned my lesson. <laughs> The uh, cheapest bid didn't win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the tip is specific to a time where there was multiple people working on your roof, and then there was a um, another guy that was there and was bilingual, um, and he could hear the hear the workers working essentially and saying stuff, um, and he and he was able to complain to an actual like company it sounded like um, so it doesn't sound like a... I've had nothing done I've had uh, I had one guy come out to look at my roof Metals Direct and I know that guy and uh, he looked at my roof and then because I was going to replace the whole thing and then he sent out to um, like other companies like top you know these two roofing companies and they all looked and gave me bids, but I never had any work done on my roof that I can think of at all. There was uh, a time where there was multiple. Well, I mean, it was never wasn't a time the, where I had multiple people on my house ever. It wasn't the roof, it was, I mean, they did the paneling on the second floor. I don't know if that can be misconstrued as the be, roof. Because they were on the roof. They were the on point. the second story of my house where my bathroom, that little piece that kind of sticks out where the bathroom is, and they did the sides of it. and they took that out and put new boards up and painted those boards. There but there were still only were on two people. Roof, now, I was at work. White males or Hispanics? Uh, Working on the house. Tino, the Hispanic, and then the uh, little James guy. Now, I was gone that day, so they, he could have brought other people. <laughs> what about when Toby was there? There was a lot of people when Toby was there. I know, it was a long time ago. ago. I'm just saying. Was there a com- ever a company that somebody, no. that they could complain to no. Well, it's probably just one of those tips. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I had like, I had a, a, a like a sewage guy come out, but there were two white guys and a bobcat, <laughs> and they just dug a train. They were there for like real quick. What about when um, Josh was building on the side? That, was that maybe what someone can be thinking no. of? That was like way long time. Right, I'm just And that was, uh, uh, my buddy Josh helped build uh, like a storage thing off to the side that was in the roof. Or the concrete in the back? Okay, and concrete, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I haven't had anything done on my roof. When people ask what the harm is with Sherry's lie, this right here is it. The investigator is talking about how they received a tip that day that Sherry and Keith had had two Hispanic men work on their roof earlier in the year, and that those two men might be involved. As with every case, that tip needed to be eliminated, and those two men needed to be talked to as potential suspects, even though they had done nothing wrong. Hispanic men and women in the area were profiled and considered suspects because Sherry had stated, like in her skinhead's blog post, that they had been the ones to take her. Tips regarding the case would roll in, with men and women accusing any Hispanic person in the area as being involved because of Sherry's description. But she was never taken. Nothing happened to her. It was all a lie for attention. I don't know the details of the tip, but from what we can surmise, the tip stated that the Papinis had work done to their house, and multiple Hispanic men were commenting sexually about Sherry in Spanish, and one of them, who happened to be bilingual, made a complaint about it being inappropriate. From what Keith is saying, it sounds like he knows almost everyone who worked on the house, and is friendly with them, so he doubts they had anything to do with this or commented on Sherry in any way. But Sherry continues to bring up other people who it could be, which Keith shuts down, leading to her rolling her eyes at him and looking at the police in an annoyed manner. It seems that she wants this tip to be true, even though the circumstances of it make little sense, which is all that Keith is saying. Huh? Heating or air conditioning? I had a new air, air conditioning put in. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, well, I'll follow up on it when we move on that. So I have a picture of your legs that I want to show you. I want to see if you recall being kicked or stomped. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you feel that? I would like to say yes. <laughs> Cool as cool can be. Thank you. I'm looking at the your right shin area. Do you remember anything about being injured like specifically in this area here on your shin? Not specifically. Okay. No. I feel like every interaction something was hurt. Gotcha. So you do recall being kicked or yes. stomped on? Hit um, with objects, kicked, stomped on. Yes. Slapped, punched, yes. whatever? Yes. Never slapped. Okay. There's just, I mean, there's obviously there's several photo bruises that you try to interpret and try to figure out. And look sure. So we can articulate down the road when we get a hold of people about what you know their actions are. Well, it didn't, it, you answered it, you answered enough questions for me on that one. I got some follow-up questions that I need to get some answers to, if we can, okay. to help close out some of my tips that we've got. <laughs> okay? Do you ever own a giraffe? Go ahead. So, I, I feel like I have a good enough sense on how the brand it hurt. Um, so I don't need a whole, I don't need the play by play. I just have a couple of questions if you're okay with that. Yes. Um, Let's get it over. With. So obviously there's each lettering to it. Was it all at once or was it several different? It was several different. It was a long period. Okay. Um, and was that in one, one extended time period or was it over multiple days? Or? It was all done in one extended time period. Um, and I know that the older one did it, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the younger one doing specifically at that time? She was to the right. I feel like she was the one uh, touching the, the, um, the I, I want to say, tools or something. She okay. was the one handling. Could you hear it or could you see the tool? I couldn't see it because it was behind me. Mm -hmm. um, um, where my head was on the table, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. You know, that's not really an angle where I could see it. Um, no, I don't want I don't you. remember. No, I'm just trying to remember. Was there a clicking? Was there? 
Did it I sit? remember the sound. Uh, give me something. So give you something. I'll give you a pen. Like that kind of sound. The setting down. Almost. Yes, it's that. So like more like they were exchanging letters or numbers or like um, more... A metal pan. So the tinking on a metal pan. Okay. Almost like if you were watching, if you were watching a show where, um, I apologize with this description, but if you were watching a show where they were removing a bullet from someone and dropping mm -hmm. it into a pan, mm -hmm. that's what I'm hearing. Okay. I've heard that sound before. That's a very distinct sound. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Okay. Vivid. Got it. Yeah. Um, and did it, could you hear anything like it, in the exchange of the letters? So what, what, let's say they dropped to E and you could hear that metal team. Was there any other noises like they were reload, like making the next letter? That's what or... I'm trying to remember. Was there a clicking or no, okay. not that I can recall. Okay. And that's really it's all. It's that tinging. I remember that tinging. But it was also, I was, I feel like I was in and out because the pain was so excruciating um, in between from, and I apologize guys, but I, from my implants, they, I, it was all of my weight directly mm. on them also. And it was hard to breathe with all of sure. that too. So On a hard surface. Yes. You being, and then pressure applied or you being held down. I wasn't necessarily held down. It was my arm, like I couldn't pull up. Mm. And that's what was because, um, yeah, it was all gotcha. that weight straight down. What did they use for a heat source? I don't know. I don't know. That's what we were trying to process through too. Like, I don't know if that, like, I don't, there wasn't like an open flame there that I recall. Um, now you mentioned something about a pan. Yeah. And the a, setting down in the tin in the pan. Because if it was, there. yeah, if it was, yeah, if it was already, um, no, if it was already hot, but you, I mean, it would, it would, it would have, would have had to have been heated back up. Mm -hmm. Um, and each letter individually. So there are tools. There are things out there that do that for like certain, uh, certain, Some certain crafty things. Uh, me, just um, there's certain crafty things that people can do, but if you never saw the object, I don't, I don't feel I need to like show you pictures of that. Yeah, no, I didn't. Um, that make, I, that's all I really wanted to talk about it. I felt, I felt like I had a good sense of that. I just wanted to make sure for court purposes later, exactly sure. how I can hold the little one accountable as opposed to it just being the big one. Yeah. Um, so that's what those questions were for. I didn't see her specifically touching any but items, but she I was, she was there. Her, yeah. <laughs> and I did. Yeah. Uh, she did mention to me, cause I was thinking, you know, at the fireplace, you know, like a, mm -hmm. one of those heating up for her arm, mm -hmm. but she definitely said she was close. Uh, it was yes, that you were struggling with trying to figure out what that was that did that to your arm. Yes. But she did say it was a smaller object, meaning it wasn't like a big long thing poking far away. It didn't you, you Right, know, like it wasn't, it wasn't like, like a, a fireplace, fireplace poker. poker. No, it was a smaller screwdriver or something. Screwdriver. Yeah, yeah it was metal. something small. I never really actually got a good look at it that I remember, but it was smaller. And yeah. Was that hot before they even came into the room? I'm going to say yes. I'm not a, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but I'm going to say yes. Big scheme of things. It, it was hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. That's it for me. I know this is redundant, That's okay. but I will, I will paraphrase. So you can just say yes or no, or say, no, Brian, you're wrong. This is it. Having talked with you the last two days, having spoke with Keith through Kyle and all that kind of stuff from the day that, you left until the day that uh, it's you were only at one location to the best of your knowledge from the time that you got picked up to the time that you were released. Oh, yes. Because <clears throat> that yes answer is about 50. 
tips I got to close out because <laughs> you've been seen in Nebraska. Oh God. You've been seen in Reno. Okay. That, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm cleaning up a lot of that crap Okay. because I have to, I have to address each tip one way or the other. There was only two car rides, a car right in and a car right out. Thank you much for that. To the best of your to the best of my knowledge, yes. To the additionally, and to the best of your knowledge, you don't recall to go. You don't recall you physically going in to a store of any kind. No. You don't recall ever being in the back of a pickup truck. No. I know it's stupid, That's Brian. Okay. You're like Brian. You're annoying the shit out of me. That's okay. <laughs> but it's not. This isn't me. I okay. understand. I'm addressing the masses. Yes. <laughs> You mentioned that last day you felt you went down two steps. Oh, from the house? Yes, yeah. it was stumbly. So I, w I, would, I would love to say two. There could have been maybe one more because it was stumbly. But I feel like it was, it was steps down. Whether it's one, two, three, not 100% sure because it was very stumbly. But. When, when you left the house that day, do you recall which way... You went out of the door, I presume? To, as in, which yeah, way did the, I stumble towards the vehicle? No, when you left, when you, when you physically left that residence or building that you were in, okay. and you got outside to the steps, you went through a doorway. To the left. To the doorway. To my knowledge. Went out the, of the doorway and stumbled down to the stairs, and then I want to say I'm leaning towards turning left. Okay. Was the door swinging inward or outward? I don't have any idea. I don't know. I never saw the door. Oh, so there's reasons for it. Sure. Out swinging doors, trailers, and swinging doors, houses. Stick, stick houses. I don't know. Yeah. If it comes to mind Thank sometime down the road. Ask me that question again. <laughs> right now? Yes. The exterior door to where you were on the day that you left or even on the day that you went there. Do you see the did door swinging into the house do you, or out of the house? Did the door swing into the house or did the door swing out from the house? Don't remember, but I will try that That's one. That's fine. Um, when the that, vehicle left the driveway, did it, did you ever feel that it went left or right from the very first turn out of the residence? No. Uh, no, straight. So then, do you I mean, stopping for a gate maybe? No. Or just? Definitely no gate. Definitely no stop. There was, there was a bump very oh very early on in the drive, a bump. I don't know whether that, it didn't feel like a speed bump. It felt like, like what it would, ugh, it didn't feel like a speed bump. It's hard to describe. It's like that you're getting onto pavement. Roadway edge? Uh, yeah. A driveway edge where the road meets yeah, the gravel? maybe. Kind of like when sunrise meets a little trail or a paracast? Yes, yes. Not like I went down a curve or up a curve or a speed bump. Just a little. It was just, yes. Just a little ridge. Do you remember which way you turned at that point or you just kept going straight? No, I, it was straight for, it was straight until I woke up to the turning. Because I remember straight. I remember waking up to that yucky feeling. I remember it being turning. Um, yes. Were you in the same position in the back of the car as you were in the, how are you, where were you sitting in the back, on the way out? My head was the, I, I believe my head was in the same area as before, but my body was placed differently. The position was placed differently. The chain was very painful. Um, my shoulders, um, fell asleep. It was very difficult to move. Um, it's 
I'm like, I don't know how to end it. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Not comfortable. Yes. <laughs> um, the, the blog that has surfaced from a while back about the Hispanics and some thoughts or uh, comments that people are spinning up. It's Can we clarify awful. some of that stuff? Yes, here? and it's awful because there's so much that my family is going through, and it's, I mean, I'm, I know, I'm sure you guys know everything, and I understand why you have to know everything, but um, my life wasn't perfect before sure. this. Um it's just an awful feeling that all of the, all, all of everything and the made up things, it's just a disgusting, yucky feeling of what it's doing to my family. Well, these are, these are things that will, and, until we can put them to bed, until we can uh, resolve them, that regardless of how long this case goes, we get people in custody. It's going to, it's going to resurface. And so the best way to deal with it is to deal with it on the front end, uh, officially, mm -hmm. um, so that way we can put it to bed. Obviously, people are drawing the conclusions that you're reporting to Hispanics did this. You wrote some, I'm assuming, did you write the blog? No. Okay. They're talking about the racist skinhead blog post that I read at the beginning of this video, which she did write. Sherry would go on to claim that she never wrote that, and someone else in her high school class who hated her wrote it using her name, that this person, whoever they are, wanted to ruin her reputation and make her seem racist, when she really isn't. But here's why that doesn't make sense. If you're going to hurt someone's reputation and frame them as an egotistical liar, the way that the person who allegedly hates Sherry wants to, why would you play the long game and write a blog on a skinhead website that no one knows about besides you? It's not as if everyone in Sherry's life already knew about the blog post, and people had known about it for years. It was discovered while Sherry was missing, as it used her full maiden name. Writing a blog post, which no one knows about until years later, isn't an effective way of hurting someone's reputation in high school. There are plenty of other methods that are more effective, and would have resulted in Sherry being ostracized, but it seemed as if none of those methods were taken. Seeing as this is an example of Sherry faking another crime against herself with all the culprits being of the same race, the person who was trying to ruin her reputation was either psychic and knew she would go on to fake her own kidnapping years into the future, or this is just a pattern for Sherry. How did the blog get written or posted under your name? Or do I you have, have any idea? No, I have no idea. I mean, are you guys even familiar with Central Valley High School? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. Because, I mean, obviously the blog is written under your maiden name. I was an athlete. Right. I played sports. My parents didn't go to any of my games. So I mean, all, there's, there was never, there was never an incident? Sense. No, it doesn't, okay. no. So there's absolutely things in not. the blog that we can investigate. Of course. And we did. Great. Um, and we couldn't find any of that stuff. Um, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are aspects of it that people can find truth in. Um, and I, so I know, I know you were never in custody uh, where you spent the night in jail. Um, we talked to your dad. He never recalls any types of fights. I have some school records that don't put you suspended and stuff like that. Um, but the post, obviously it's, it's showing up on this skinhead website, cute. Um, but it, Didn't people say my head's shaved now, too? Uh, Sorry. Can't hear all the noise. Um, but it originates from a MySpace account. A, um, a, not, we call them blogs now, but it's not. Um, it originates from a MySpace account. Um, have you ever had a MySpace account? Not that I can remember. I mean, that's... It's old school. Yeah, no. I mean, I had a, even the Facebook page that I had was for a very short period of time. It was not for a very long period of time. Uh, yeah. Prior mm -hmm. prior to all this stuff, have you guys ever seen that blog before? Have you ever heard of it? I've seen. You know, it's what I'm referring yeah. to, right? The I mean, one about the I, Latinos I never, behind I her never, dad and giving her shit yeah. and all that I've, kind of stuff. I've seen something similar to that. The the one that is out there now, no. There was something similar. There was something similar. 
And I first thing I asked her, I was like, the heck is this? And she said it was fake, just like back then, although there was a picture. And I didn't, like, what, what is all this about? And uh, we tried to get some, like, lawyer guy to take that photo off. I've we been don't know how trying it got to remember his website. name. For so I've been trying to remember his name. Yeah. Who's this next? one hasn't come up. I have no idea what you're talking about. The picture. That's the photo that I thought somebody was using on this website. Yeah. I can find the photo. It took me forever to do it. So I'm right. just curious. Is there internet service here? Is there Wi-Fi here? Uh, he's got like a Wi-Fi thing. Gotcha. There. Uh, but it's not on there. I can never see it. This was years ago. Yeah, because and it has nothing. Is... And then, um, like what you just said, and I am addressing it probably tomorrow. So I'm sure it's going to come up when I do my new thing. But like you just said, there's all this fake stuff, and I, we have no idea, and we haven't ever had an idea on how it was written or formed. When we had found it, I contacted a lawyer about getting it removed. And they had discussed, you know, this is... Finding out who created it. Yes, mm -hmm. we, this needs to be removed. It's obviously not me. And they, he couldn't get anywhere with it, with getting it removed. What is it? What is it? The, the article, article that they had. And, the one that you guys are talking about. Is it the Keep Walking, the one titled Keep Walking? I, let me see what you're talking about, about here. I know. Well, I want to clarify this because now I'm confused about something else. So... Yes, this one. And that's the same one we're talking about with the picture? Or are we talking about two? That was the same one, but that one is written differently than what we were talking about. But it was Keep Walking. I remember that. Well, how do we start over? I think I'm confused. Are you still there? Uh, <laughs> you can take it from there. <laughs> All right. So the the keep walking article that's the one that's been focused and recently that is similar to a past thing that you guys dealt with. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and then this past one, there's a picture of what? Of, of what? There's a photo of her when she was very very young, and it's like she's looking up in the air. It was like a picture from like the. Uh, youth conferences, like the church youth conferences that I used to do and stuff at school. But it is a true picture of you, not something that somebody manipulated. It's an old picture that somebody obviously got um, a hold of. It was like from like my my websites from the church stuff that I used to do. Okay. It was like from like a, a almost like a, I don't want to say a group photo, but it was from a function gotcha. that I had participated in. And we, well, she dealt with it prior to that, even prior before we got together because somebody, um, brought it to her attention. I think it was my speech. So I remember I think I had one for like a month or something. Um, and she, there's probably a record of it, and she's even saying this is fake even at that point because they're friends. And then one of her best friends even is like, no, this is stupid. So then all these facts are just not even, they don't even apply to her. Yeah, it was... Um... I'm trying to remember how MySpace even worked. Um, but I, I want to say it was like somebody, um, because I was doing a lot of like uh, church functions and youth functions and conferences and things like that, and someone had posted it somewhere. I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to remember how it even worked. And my, um, it was sent to my best friend, as in look at your friend, and my, both my friend and I um, had defended against it. So Jennifer? Correct, yes. The person using Sherry's photos against her will, who is sending harassing messages about Sherry to her friends, is more than likely Sherry herself. As we've seen, she thrives on chaos and drama. She enjoys the attention it brings, and it makes her feel like the main character in her life. She can't go on MySpace, because last time, someone went on it and edited her pictures in a mean way. She can't go on Facebook, because someone took images of her at a Christian youth conference, and said nasty things about her. Meanwhile, no one was ever able to find who did these things to her. So, bottom line, it's even more 
elaborate now. It appears mm -hmm. I don't remember it because it's so well, long people ago. are trying to spin it off as that this is the catalyst for what happened to you. No, and and, uh, and that, I'm trying to shut I mean, that down. I mean, a week before that, it was I did it for the money. I think and, and I'll address oh, this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I, that's why we're here. Hey, yeah. Remember yesterday we talked about some things that were going to be hard. Yeah, that are going to that are going to irritate well, you. This is where. And, and that's where this is hard for me because I have to deal with all this <laughs> dumb thing. But so it, five hundred tips. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't. You, you, you know what? I yeah. wasn't a perfect person before this, and that's. But what do you mean by that? So you know, what do you mean by that? I skipped school, and you know, did yeah, did dumb kid stuff, and I had a really really shitty relationship with my parents excuse my vulgar language okay. and i lived at the heart center for a long time okay. i stayed in my high school gym at some times i mean it she it's hard for her when she started talking about this and hearing that kind of stuff is like when she got her ccw and they ran her mm -hmm. fingerprints or whatever and mm -hmm. they were like what's this breaking in entry charge sure. and she was really hurt by that and she was confused and then I remember she was telling me the story and she asked them, well, what's the address? And it was her home address because her parents called the cops on her for breaking sure. her For home. opening so, the back door to get my basketball shoes so for when a she's basketball reminded tournament. Of her, like, that childhood. gives you any indication of my childhood with my parents. Mm -hmm. We read it. And that's why the whole time we're like, I don't know, they're still calling Your, your parents in our office didn't get off on the right foot on day one of this anyway, so I, I hear you. I have zero desire whatsoever to even see them right now and I find that to be very odd. There's a problem before too. A it's huge right. problem. <laughs> you guys heard the voice. And, I, and that's something I thought about a lot too because it, it was my aunts and my sister and my mom and my dad. <sighs> okay. So what, so if you remember, what are the main differences from the the blog that we have a copy of, the blog we're reading now, as opposed to the old one you guys were dealing with. He's trying to keep me away from that. So. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, what, keep... it, oh. What's the main difference that um, you remember? I feel like it's everything. I don't remember. I, I don't remember what I said before or now, except for it looks way longer. The one that that I came across when we got back together that had the little photo was like a paragraph long. Um, it seems like the last one that I've just now recently seen is like it's been added to and stuff. And the other one that I saw, I don't think it had anything with uh, Lane said Latino in the whole entire thing. I think it said something like gangs or something like that. Um, Wow. That was so long ago, and I've never seen a copy. It was again. It, it was think. It was brought to us, and I believe. I think I had a MySpace for a little while. I think that's how I came up, or maybe I just did a Google search or something when somebody mentioned, like, "What the heck is this?" Um, do you remember what lawyer you went through to try to get that clean? And that's what I'm trying to remember for you guys. Um, it should be an email. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I really don't remember. If you gave me like a list of lawyers in Reading, I might be able to pick his name out because it was, it seems like it was ethnic to me in some way. I, I just remember, like I told you, and since we're all here in a safe room or whatever, I remember I saw, oh, this is weird. What is this? It's fake. I have no idea. I had to deal with this a while back. She told me with her friend Jennifer. We don't know what it is. We don't know if somebody created it to be mean to me through her used to use stuff. We don't know. And I remember I was like, cool, get rid of it. And that was at the time I was like, let's get your credit up. Let's get you know, all this kind of stuff. And I remember. <laughs> One more thing to the yeah, bottom. Like, let's get this. Let's I was get like, this, is, this is weird. And I was like, where did they pull this picture from? And uh, it's like black and white picture too. It's a really odd photo. Um, and that's why I said I haven't seen it, so I don't. I don't even know. And then I don't know when the article, the one that I was shown was written in 2007. And that's what this one's date stamped. Okay. Which the one that we were talking about was, we got together in 2005 Five or, six. Five or six. And it was, uh, that was the time that I saw it. So that's why 
that's what I'm saying. This one is like different. I don't know. It's been altered or changed on whatever website that came from. No, just give us something else yeah. to do. Like we don't have anything else going on. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Um. Uh, let's see. I couldn't tell you the differences. I just the main thing that points out to Got me it. is the paper you showed that long, and the one I remember is like this tiny, and it had a little photo. Okay. Yeah. We're just talking about it. <laughs> no, no. I, I, and 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 to be honest, if it is something, I don't care. I mean, I, I'm, if it, I'm just saying, telling you, if it if it was something that was authentic and that you that was convictions that you held back then, okay, it is what it is. We all have our convictions and stuff that we hold inside. Okay. But I mean that's that's where I'm at. I don't. It's 2016. It's it is what it is, but so uh, we'll we'll add that onto the list of follow up and hopefully get that resolved and uh, see if we can get it removed as well. Um, that would be wonderful. I like the latest one I heard that uh it's uh, Rodriguez well, that's the thing is, yeah, why why did this all happen? And that's what everyone's oh, asking for. No, we're asking that same exact question. You've you've already addressed the fact. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, everyone believes it's a you know a sex trafficking thing, and I think you kind of touched on that. There was no point. There there was no sexual connotation with anything with you that you recall, right? No. And Keith and I were trying to process through that as well. Um, I'm not a virgin, obviously. So um, I feel like Clarifying. even if I <laughs> even if I um, I didn't know <laughs> even if I would have been asleep, I would have felt it. I would have felt I've... it, and that's something that was uh, it, it was excruciatingly terrifying. Waking up every day, I would do that check. Right. Mm, nope doesn't hurt mm, right nope that doesn't hurt right i never felt that ever and obviously based upon efforts and tactics that have been deployed in the last three weeks it doesn't seem that there's a financial reason behind it i mean you think somebody would have not for uh, taken some people some off right uh, but i mean if you want me to guess i mean i don't <laughs> i don't have any clue other than the, uh, she looks very young, which you, you know, right. running, so possible sex trapping. Oh, wow. You're 34 or <laughs> well, Did they ask you how old you were? No. Did they ask anything specific about you? No. And the only thing that they even inquired of you was things that, that sounds like they either heard or read or saw via the media, right? I would say yes. One thing you didn't talk about that you told me, maybe you did, I wasn't listening, but, uh, you said, they would say, oh, they think you ran away. Right. And then that, that it's law enforcement that's, that paid us to do your something. They would say that. that as they were shutting the door. Yeah. They would say, well, I don't want to say they. It was always the, the bigger one. It was always the bigger one would, like, say things as she was walking away. or and Like, the only time she ever really spoke on top of me was when she was cutting my hair right here. Um, but, yeah, she would say things as she was walking away. It was that. <laughs> right. I can still, like, hear that huffy, like, I don't know how to tell you other than it, that huffy, shitty right. kind of. Aloof, smart ass. Thank you. Yes. Didn't you say you heard him say stuff like, he didn't, he doesn't want you to hurt her or something like that? It's, 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 dif it's difficult to say that specifically because it wasn't. English, but I feel like yes, because of her body language, because of the emotions that she used, and and holding her back. The one time that she actually did hold her back, that's why I'm. That's the pieces that I'm putting together for myself. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. It's just based on my interpretation of like body language and things like that. I'm trying. You said try and be specific as possible, so I'm trying to be specific for you. Ish is always good, right? Ish. 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 Okay, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm sure I have other things I'll think about, but we can adjourn yeah. and um, deal with that stuff later. And I, I can still hear, like, phrases, but 
I, I don't speak Spanish, so I, I just rattle off what kind of sounds right. what would even kind of sound like it. And that can be misinterpreted. Yeah, because we even I even took a moment and tried to look up a couple of words mm -hmm. online, but I don't know how to spell right. them. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Yep. And they talk so fast. <laughs> it's a love language. So frustrating, <laughs> yeah. Um, questions for Kyle or I? Any question? We're on the table. What do you guys think? I think there's some six sons of bitches out uh, there. Well, I think we all agree on that. And I think there's do you lots. Think it was a mistaken identity? Do you think it was I think there's lots, of, there's lots of points that prove different aspects of this. So, them always hiding their face shows an end game of you a, either possibly getting away or you possibly being let go. Uh, if I know in my heart prior to an incident, or if I'm going to kill you or something like that, I wouldn't necessarily wouldn't care like, yeah. Yeah. if you, if you saw me. Uh, but because they always took those steps to hide, uh, to always hide their faces, to never like, always be in the room and different aspects of that, it, it shows their intentions from the very beginning. Whatever those intentions are, whatever they meant to prove by this, um, we'll never truly know until we until we talk to them. And that's going to that's going to be the most frustrating part for you, for us, um, for society in general. Um, because at the end of the day, this is everybody's worst nightmare, uh, and everybody doesn't like to hear that and doesn't want to to realize that. And the people in this room, the people at our office, this is this is law enforcement's worst nightmare. It's your worst nightmare because you lived it. Uh, it's family's worst nightmare. It's society's worst nightmare that there are these people out there who did this. Uh, so I spoke with FBI at length yesterday. Um, they're BAU folks and several other folks, and they're I'll funnel them some information and try to get uh, try to figure out with the information that she's provided with evidence that they have that we have that we're all sharing to try to get a i don't want to use the word profile because mm -hmm. it's misused a lot to try to figure out is know. this what you were talking about yesterday with like what did you say behavioral and analysis, behavioral analysis or something yeah, yeah. Yeah. so that stuff's going on sitting here i got three emails from them um is this was this a preseason run for somebody I mean, see how far they could get before they do something else i don't know i don't have an answer for that and was this i have plenty of theories but we don't need to share theories i'm tired of yeah. that well, i was gonna say yeah because that's she doesn't know about this i know you guys do but there's a i think it's called fish mountain fish hill whatever you call it and you can see and then they told you what they found up there mm -hmm. and that's kind of weird to me and but again, that's again a theory and a, it goes nowhere, but <laughs> I just thought that was a little odd. Um, the fact that they passed, you know, I, I'm sure you asked, but I couldn't recall if they were going like 50 miles an hour and they were, or if they were like going 20 and then they backed up like they were looking or something. And there was no screeching tires or anything, so I don't think it was very fast because people generally drive fast on that road. <laughs> um, I don't think so. Vehicles? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I are they them. are they ser ser like in a series or are they just off the uh, surveillance? They're just off the surveillance of the dark. Are they snapshots? Type? Yeah. Do you want to look at? We have surveillance from your neighborhood that captured a bunch of vehicles. And it's only fifty yeah. percent because it's only everything. I'm not going to tell you which side because it's only fifty percent. It's only one way uh, with the car that we have. So there's only one way we have surveillance. We don't have it the opposite way. Yeah, it's just surveillance in the area nearby where you, you were picked up. That just and it has tons of cars, but we've gone through it. I thought about that too. And looked in the at room. it was because I watched those shows. I'm like, there, there's, I see it on the shows. <laughs> but there's several vehicles. That's how they find them. <laughs> and, and that's how we find them once we have an idea of what we're looking. And, right. and what we're looking for, it, none of these, we don't have any information at this time that any of these vehicles we're going to show you are the vehicle. 
You understand yeah. that? Okay. There's still an option that it went the complete opposite way. Uh, so this is just to roll correct. in so, or out one direction. Well, yeah. what I'm looking for is okay. when you look at these vehicles, that kind of looks like the car, or that's definitely not the car, that type of stuff. Got it. Or if you see, holy shit, that's the vehicle, that's fine too. Okay. But I'm not looking for you to guess. I'm not. It's just, hey, here's the cars in the area. Does these look familiar? Does this ring a bell? Is this okay. something we're looking at? See, this is one of those times where like my body is uncontrollably shaking and I feel okay, but it's doing it anyway. If you don't want to do it today, we can I do it do. later. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, we don't want you to feel discouraged because it's not there either. Um, because there's plenty of tools that we are still doing. This is the last thing that's discouraging me. I feel discouraged in, as a whole, so <laughs> it's okay. I don't want to say discouraged, I want to say angry. Mm -hmm. um, that's been so, I feel like, helpful to feel that way. I feel like it's been um, better than the shaky, crying, upset. Um, it's vindication almost. It feels better. I think that tummy medication is helping a lot too. What do you guys see in your doctor? Thursday is going to come up. Do you have anything on your end or for your office? For um, them? No, no, not, not right now. We did get your, because Kyle filled out the last form we needed, we got your application scanned into our um, system on the confidential line. Okay. And so, um, as soon as there's any bills to be paid, those will get paid right away. There's lots of that one listed one for whatever reason. And that, that'll even include things like your doctor, you know, like your aftercare visits from your doctor and things like that. It's not, not just hospital bills. Um, maybe come with me to the restroom. Maybe the shaking will go away a little bit if I use the restroom really quick. Absolutely. I thought there was. <laughs> it probably went like four times. Maybe. Yeah, I kept on like, I thought, I thought maybe like a bird fly by. Shit. I live somewhere. I thought that, that you might have seen it on the floor over here when you, you like look that way and you kind of like smile a little bit. That was. <laughs> I thought I've seen it <laughs> I thought maybe I was just losing my mind. No, it's. A, well, the first time I thought it was the lizard. But I've seen it go up and down a couple of times. Time right now is 14.38 hours. Oh. The interviews are illuminating, as it's only really in hindsight that we can assert she was lying. Sherry was so comfortable throughout the interviews giving fictitious details about being beaten, assaulted, and kidnapped, that if this footage had been released prior to 2022, it's likely she would have been believed outright. But with the added knowledge of her years of lies and James Ray's coming forward to confess his part in the crime, this footage is incredibly haunting. If you have made it to this part in the video, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out the description box down below and check out our video on Stacy Smart, the woman who actually went missing the same day as Sherry, who has never been found. Also consider donating to the family's GoFundMe or supporting them by liking the Help Find Stacy Smart Facebook page. If there is a case you would like to see me cover, email me at dreading.official at gmail.com. Have a great day and remember to stay safe.